know, I love music. I've been doing this since practically October. So today we thought it'd be fun to celebrate all the songs that makes the season bright. From Cher to Megan Trainer and even our buddies Hoda and Jenna, you're in for a real treat today. We've been counting down to this one. Hoda and Jenna have released their very first original song for the holidays. It's called A Carefree Christmas. And they've teamed up, thank goodness, with vocal coach and social media sensation Cheryl Porter, who helped them in a large part there to produce their holiday single. And it was quite the task from writing all the lyrics to learning how to hit the perfect notes. Hoda and Jenna gave us a behind the scenes look at how it all came together. Okay, it's starting to feel a lot like Christmas around here because it is finally time to release our original holiday song. We've okay. been waiting for this. Yeah, this all started way back in May. So Jenna and I hey. met up with this really cool vocal coach. That's her, her name is Cheryl Porter. We wanted some simple voice lessons. Well, Cheryl, by the way, has more than 10 million YouTube subscribers. She's got this crazy, unique method of teaching people how to sing. She was an incredible teacher. She actually made us believe that we could sing and now we've created our own holiday song. And and it's not just the two of us you'll Obviously. be happy to hear. We have Cheryl on board and we got to work. But before we drop our single, which we're very excited and slightly nervous about, yeah. here's a little teaser. There are certain dreams that are almost too big to dream. Yes. Dropping a single at Christmas time seems like a huge dream, but guess what? We're doing it. We are doing it. Is this, like, so is this really happening? It's happening. It's gonna be a carefree Christmas. You got it. So the name of the song is Carefree Christmas. We just wanna bring some cheer, some joy to people all over the world. Christmas is supposed to be beautiful, and it is, but it ends up also being, I've gotta check off my yes. list. I didn't get something for that. I Frazzled. feel guilty about that. Frazzled, running back and forth to the mall. So it's like, listen, you can be busy on this Christmas. It can be stressful, but you can still be happy. And carefree. You can still be happy and carefree. <laughs> so this is Hit Pause. Yeah for our carefree Christmas song. And you might feel your blood pressure drop a yeah. little, right? You yes. might feel a little bit more calm. And it might just remind people what? that when they're calm, they have more fun. For the holiday. That's right. Holden and Jen have never sung in a studio before. And I'm happy as a vocal coach to hold their hand through it all, but I know they got it. Cheryl could teach that chair <laughs> to sing. So she sat with us and we matched her tone yes. and we learned literally to go from non-singers to below average singers. Yeah, okay. But you can do any kind of notes you okay. want to because all Ooh, the notes are too I don't and know I'm any notes. But I love like, yes, it. <laughs> Jen and I have done so many things together. We have gone to cheese making school. This is beautiful, Oda. You made a really lovely one. The, the polar plunge. The polar plunge. You didn't die. <laughs> The two of us went sailing on the Hudson. That's true. Oh, yeah, the Statue of Liberty. Oh, God. Ow. <laughs> what have we not done yet? Drop a single. Drop a single. So and it's time. You say why, we say why not. Jen and I are always in harmony on our show, so we thought, why don't we put that harmony to the test? How much harder is singing than talking? Can't be. Not much. Not much. We love Christmas. So here we go. Let's drop it, baby. <laughs> Fa la 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 Christmas. It's better than that. It's, it's better. better than that. It sure is. All right, you ready? OK, are you ready? I am ready. Without further ado, here's the music video for our original Christmas song, A, A Carefree Christmas, Christmas with Hoda and Jenna.
Pretty good girls, nice work. Hoda and Jenna are not the only ones in 30 Rock making music. Our buddy Jimmy Fallon teamed up with Grammy winner Megan Trainer for a fun holiday duet. It's truly the collab we never knew we needed around the holidays, and the stars told us all about it. Oh my God, that's why I won't move. I said, I had, you got it. Like, the, you got it live. Okay, wait, 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 wait. How did this come to be? Whose idea was it? Who thought of it first? I've been trying to write a Christmas song for Jimmy Fallon for years now because eh. there's a rumor. They're like, he's working up another one. He's working up a whole Christmas album. It's going to be huge. And then um, I finally get a call through my friend, Gian Stone. Gian Stone, I John love you. Stone, yeah. Okay. Um, and he's like, Jimmy wants to do a song with you. And I was like, what do you mean, so what, Jimmy? So what did you have, Jimmy? What was the beginning? So I, I sent, I sent, Megan, a, uh, a voicemail of what I thought the song could be. Okay, I, uh, I thought it was going to be called Wrap, be mic. Wrap It Up. Okay, and this is embarrassing, but this is what I sent. Turn it to you in the star, wrap it up, wrap it up. Wanna turn it in my star, wrap it up, wrap it up. Wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. All right, so anyways. So you, so said, let's just you said that, that. I didn't hear back from Megan Trainor. I didn't months. know how to respond to that. She's like, <laughs> new call, new free uh, cell. Who's this? Uh, Who's this? Uh, so uh, what did like, you uh -oh. do? I was like, okay, I have to like fix this and then I have to respond like, that was so good, Jimmy. <laughs> but I you, think. Jimmy? I was like, yeah. that was so cute. You know what we could do though is like a doo-wop thing, because ah. I'm the doo-wop girl. And and we could say wrap me up like a present. And oh, you're just instead silly of wrap goose. it up, wrap me yeah. up. So wrap we up get on the like, phone. Finish that. And she calls me um, and she goes, Well, I, I worked on a scratch too, and her scratch is <laughs> a thousand times <laughs> better. <laughs> it's basically the song. It's like wrap me up. Ooh, How long did it take you to do that, Megan, by the way? Um, I got on the Zoom, we don't, you don't even know this. We got on the Zoom a half hour earlier than Jimmy because yeah. we were like, we gotta figure something out and it's like be <laughs> prepared. I wanna do my homework so that when Jimmy comes on, he loves it. Then I basically auditioned the chorus for him and I was sweating and crying and throwing up and then he oh. loved it and I was like, oh, you do? But we were on the FaceTime for like an hour and a half, maybe? Yeah, hour and a half we, we, wrote we wrote, She's like, Quit. do you wanna write the song with me? I'm like. Oh my God, like, in my head, I'm like, it's already written. But yes, of course. Yeah. I'm happy. Like, like, did you not get the voice Am I getting credit for this? Yeah. Like, did you not person. hear my voice now? Yeah. <laughs> I see the germ of the idea, rap, yeah. is rap, and then rap me up. Never give up, anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, never give, give up. up. But Megan It'll gave it a nice zhuzh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She gave it the best zhuzhing of all time. It was massive. So what's it like to perform together? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just a match made in heaven. It really is. It's, it's different for me. Like, for him, it's like, oh, but probably, I don't know. <laughs> but for me, I'm like, oh my God. You know, like when my mom and dad are everywhere with me and I'm just trying not to cry the whole time with happy tears, because no. I've loved you my whole life. And like, Aww. you're so musically talented. And to be like, we have a song together and I get to go everywhere with Jimmy in she New York. She is a genius and brilliant writer as well as performer and singer, but do you remember the one time you came on the show and I forget what song it was you were performing? I fell down. And you fell down. You fell down on, on Fallon? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, I thought that was the name of the song. Oh. It was viral. I fell down, I fell down, I fell down. down. Uh, so I so she, she did the thing, it was great. At the end, she turned around and just fell and laid on the ground. And I go, <laughs> well, and so I went down and laid next to her. Oh, and I go, did? we'll be right back did. with more tonight, Joe. I couldn't move, I was so embarrassed. And I go, do you want to redo it? And you go, and you go, no. You I said no? Yeah. Wanna... That's the magic of yeah. Megan Trainor right there. <laughs> you said no, because you are okay. you are exactly as you are. <laughs> and by the way, we should say that this is a hit maker. You write songs, you, gave, you give one to J-Lo, you give one here. She's been doing this, writing awesome, uh, cool songs. You're a machine. You're she fantastic. Is. One of the most <laughs> talented people I've ever met She's in my life. Incredible. You guys, it's weird to take this time. I just feel like we need to ask you about Hoda and Jenna's Christmas hit. I hope that's Have you heard about it? Because I know it's oh. competition for you. Do you know about it, Megan? It's called A Carefree Christmas. Yeah. Have you, you heard seen it? their video? Why didn't nope. I write Let's it? Go ahead. Okay. Here we go. I think we have to go to commercial. Maybe we should have. We have to go to commercial. Come on. Oh, I know her on TikTok. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wait, you sound good. Wait. 
Is that Jenna's real hat? Can we show make Is that Jenna's real this hat? This is so awkward. What do you hat. think? I see her wear that tiny Wait, What do we think? She wears that tiny hat to work. <laughs> Jenna always wears that little hat. <laughs> Okay, I think it's great, but like we're writing. Okay, <laughs> it's over. We're doing a duet. I mean, Sorry, Jimmy. Let's do it. Oh, how fun was that? I love Megan Trainer. She's the best. And Jimmy, too, as always, so good. That makes the holidays that much brighter. Coming up, comedian and actor Matt Rogers dishes on his latest collaboration with a surprise guest. Welcome back. It's Popstar Plus, and Matt Rogers recently released his album, Have You Heard of Christmas? He says it was seven years in the making. Wow. One of his surprise collaborations on the album is with the SNL star, Bowen Yang, who's very funny, and the duo gave us the scoop. <laughs> if you did not know, oh my gosh. These two, by the way, best friends. They host a very popular podcast. It's called Las Culturistas. You got it. Yeah. Of course. You did it. First of all, that was brilliant. Thank you. Um, I was laughing. The fact that the Jenna Bush Heger cut. Would you tell it's us rock why and roll. that works? It's like, I want to see Jenna, Jenna Bush Heger comes out the, the bill. It's fun to sing. It's got a rock and roll vibe. Yeah. Your well, name. You, you made got my, it. You made my year yeah. last year. And the fact <laughs> that you have taken this one hit. Yes. And turned it into a whole album? Yeah. I mean, is that a dream? Well, you know, I had a special last year on Showtime called Have You Heard of Christmas? And um, it's all original music. So I guess the goal with yes. it would be to record that. And then Capitol Records was like, you want to do a record deal? And I was like, are you sure? Are you positive? <laughs> um, and they were. And so here we are. And I had the song Rockefeller Center. I thought the only way to make it better would be, of course, to add a Vogue Madonna-inspired <laughs> breakdown by Bo and Yang yes. of Rockefeller Center. Look, this is our little co-working space between yeah. the three of us, yeah. and um, it's a wonderful place to come. There's a sweet green in our office. It's there sure yeah. is. That, I, by the way, it is the best spot. Now, <laughs> Mariah Carey may be biting her nails to the quick. She should be very afraid. Because somebody is <laughs> and zooming and share, too. And share. Yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever met Mariah? Uh, well, we actually did meet Mariah did. in, uh -huh. like, a fleeting moment. So, well, we, it, was, was it was an important moment, though. We were doing a Peloton class. Yes. We were in a Peloton class for Cody <laughs> Rigsby, who, who we all love. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! You have a clip of it. This was not that's me helping her down. That's Matt helping her down. And but that was when she announced it's time. Every yeah. year she announces it's time when you know the season starts and when all I want for Christmas. Wait, is, was it wait, a so, surprise? So, it yes. was a surprise. So she was doing a bit like where she was going to come out and say to Cody Rigsby, who's a, the Peloton yeah. guy, he, she was like, <laughs> it's time, and they were going to do a little bit. But of course she's wearing like 50 inch heels. Yeah. Like she's up on a perch. Yeah. So she turns to me. I'm in the Peloton thing. <laughs> I don't Peloton a lot. <laughs> And she goes, can you help me down? I almost tore my ACL getting out of that chair. I was like, Mariah will not collapse. But also the fact on that you, watch. not on my watch. The fact on. that you just called the bike a chair is a Oh, yes, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I, was like, I couldn't have snapped out of that chair, bike, Peloton, thingamajig. Just snapped it up. All right, so you have a moment with Mariah. Yeah. You have Lady Gaga's on your I had a moment with Lady Gaga yeah. where Lauren Michaels announced to the entire staff, there she is, the entire staff that night that Bad Bunny hosted, and Lady Gaga's gonna intro the second song, and I screamed in front of all 200 of my co-workers, <laughs> yeah. Lady Gaga? 
the only appropriate reaction. Right. Of course. But then I told her that at the after party in a crowded restaurant. I said, when Lauren told me you guys were you would be here, I said, Lady Gaga. I screamed her name to her face. And, and, and? Was so humiliating. And she she was like, she I think a flash of like terror flashed. Like, I bet she liked face. it because when he screamed Jenna Bush Hager, yeah, I liked she, it. Yes. No, we, we have very little it. chill around our Love heroes. It. So yeah. this is. We're into so it. Yeah. Um, okay, first of all, when you were young, did you yeah. sing? Yeah. Like, is this something you foresaw in your future and whole album dropping a tour? I mean, I think that like any kid you're like in your yeah. you're in your like bedroom yeah. and you're singing into the hairbrush or what have you yeah. whatever household object you want to sing into <laughs> you really can but i don't think i ever saw it for myself you know what i mean um, and then all of a sudden one day it was through doing this as a comedy, comedy show yeah. so i started this as a one man show in the west village i was like you know it would be funny i think i saw an interview with mariah carey yeah. and the interviewer was like she kind of said the quiet part out loud. She was like, well, you must be making money every year, huh? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I think that's so funny. I want to do like a solo show where it's me releasing an album just to make money off Christmas. <laughs> and six years later, it worked. It worked. Well, I guess it's the year for first holiday albums. And up next, we've got another one to discuss from the iconic Cher. That's next on Popstar Plus. Well, thanks for sticking with us. Christmas came early for music fans. The one and only pop culture icon herself, Cher, has released her first ever holiday album. She did our tree lighting concert, looked great out there uh, by the tree. Cher, nice enough to sit down with Harry Smith to talk about the inspiration for the album and more as she reflected on her career. Take a look. I bought your record, cash money. I made the investment. Okay, tell me it wasn't worth it. It was worth every penny. The thing that occurred to me immediately was, why hadn't you done this before? Because I didn't want to. Really? Yep. I didn't want to because I couldn't find myself in Christmas records. I didn't really want to sing any of those songs. And then my record company was really good. They just let me go to my house and then hand them the master. So here comes Cher. Christmas, a half dozen brand new songs and a half dozen classics. I have never had anybody on any album. Ever? Ever. Wow. Duets with legends like Cyndi Lauper, Michael Buble, and Stevie Wonder, whose What Christmas Means to Me evokes the joys of Christmas's past. I called him and I was really nervous. And I said, Stevie, I did this song and I can do part of it really well, but there's some part I just can't do and I need you to come and do it. And he said, consider it done. And then I ran around my room. I swear to God, I ran around my room, I jumped up and down in my bed screaming, Stevie Wonder's going to be on my album. And so too, Darlene Love, 
Now, a duet Cher first sang backup for her in 1963. We found a photo. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, I'd love to have that. Yeah, I was 17. Along with the Christmas album comes the 25th anniversary edition of Believe. How amazing is it that Believe is 25 years old? It's not that amazing, okay? <laughs> it pisses me. It pisses the <laughs> out of me, and you can't put that out. Yes, we can. Okay, good. <laughs> no, it just is like, what is this? So you and age, not, you're not friends? No, my mother didn't mind. But I do. I yeah. hate it. I had a tough time with 70. I'll admit it. Like, I mean, like, really knocked me in a hole for a while. I'd give anything to be 70 again. <laughs> Cher gives off some crazy great energy. Interviewing her is a blast. Are you writing a memoir? Yes. It's very difficult because I've lived too long and I've done too many things. And so it would have to be like an encyclopedia, truthfully. A tome divided into the multiple share eras, including movie star. So during the pandemic, and we all sat around watching movies, and I went back and watched Moonstruck. You just knocked the daylights out of that part. It was just so great. I know. <laughs> the Oscar and Grammy Award winner, known for those unforgettable performances, they have such great chemistry together. I love when they are in the same room. Thank you to Harry and, of course, Cher. After the break, our neighbors, the Rockettes, were nice enough to swing by, and they'll tell us about their Christmas spectacular coming up. We're back with more Pop Star Plus. Christmas in New York, let's be honest, is never the same without a visit to the Radio City Christmas Spectacular. It's an incredible show. From all the music to the choreography, the show is now, I think it's in its 90th season, and it seems to get better and better every year. This year, there's a special new edition. The Rockettes joined us on the plaza here for a sneak peek. Take a look. More than 70 million people wow. have seen the Rockettes perform in the Christmas Spectacular in the 90 years since its debut. Well, this year, the show will feature beloved holiday performances, including this one, which we love, and the recent edition of the Frost Fairies. Of course, an appearance from Santa Claus. With us now are two longtime Rockettes. We've got Bailey Taylor, Bailey and Taylor. Welcome, guys. Hi. First of all, Jen and I love to bring our families to this, and we are always so excited about something new. The fairies which is a very cool part is something that kids love because they actually see drones as well right yes last year we brought in a newly reimagined scene called dance of the frost fairy yeah. where the rockets wear beautiful fairy wings and there's fairy drones that fly high above the audiences <laughs> this year though more drones than ever more and drones something that you can only see here at radio city yeah. music hall <laughs> we're so thrilled to open the show this friday november 17th we run through january 1st and come on over, come check us out. Oh, of course. We do it, we do it every single year. Every year. I feel like Hoda's one of your first guests. <laughs> yeah. We read that you guys kick 200 times per performance. 
We can only kick about <laughs> four times yeah. in our day's Maybe. routines. How do y'all prepare to, to have that type of stand, stamina? I can't believe it myself. 200 kicks in a show, sometimes four shows in a day. It really takes a lot of teamwork from the ladies behind me. We rehearse six hours a day, six days a week to create the Christmas wow. Spectacular. So it's an incredible amount of hard work, but we really enjoy our jobs. Now, you guys have been on this team for 10 years. Is that right for each of you? For 14 me. for you wow. and 12 for me. 12 for you. Wow. Do you remember when we came and tried to be Rockettes? <laughs> I was there. I knew you were. You, were. <laughs> you can't that erase it. That was a terrible day and We want to commend everybody because it's freezing out here and y'all are warm on the inside so that we're happier. <laughs> what are you guys going to do for us now? Today we're doing a number from our uh, a number in our show called New York at Christmas and it's just a little <gasps> snippet. We, we love this one. one. <laughs> okay. This is the one with the double, double decker bus. Yes. yes. Here we are to perform for you today and we're okay. so thrilled. We'll take, take it away. Thank, Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. Makes me fall in love with New York all over again 100%. when you guys do that. And that was Christmas. awesome. 90 seasons, man. My mom loved coming to New York and check out the Rockettes. Hard to believe. All right, so we've got one more musical treat for you today. The film Migration, which by the way is from NBC's parent company, NBC Universal. That tells the story of a duck family hoping, like many families, to head to Jamaica. Instead, they land here in New York where things go awry. Here's a peek at an adorable musical performance from the animated film, Migration. I love you always, forever, near and far, closer, together, everywhere, I will be with you, everything I will do for you. I love you always, forever, near and far, closer, together. Migration rated PG. That looks like a really cute movie, and the soundtrack for Migration looks good, and that hits theaters, the movie, on December 22nd. Well, that's going to do it for today, everybody. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. There's plenty of new music for you to listen to this weekend. Hope that helped. Have a great one.
You never know. Uh, you, you never show up to somebody's house empty-handed. So if you're invited to a holiday party, you must bring something with you. How about dessert? Wait, how did that feel sane coming out of your mouth? Felt good. Do you think well, that's I'm true? Going to learn okay. from this segment. Okay, good. Jocelyn <laughs> Delk Adams is the founder of Grand Baby Cakes and mm -hmm. author of the upcoming book, Every Day Grand. Jocelyn, you make the most beautiful food. Thank and it's, you. And it's, and it's Usually easy too if you pay this attention. Isn't Am I right? Bad at all. You sure? Are you I sure? Because we're really not good great about with this. baking. No, okay. you got this. Okay. You got this. Okay. Believe. Let's do it. So okay. we start with dry. Dry okay. ingredients. Okay. We're just gonna plop it all together. So since we are making gingerbread, we need all the spices. Mm. Like you Tell get us that nice whip. Here. Oh my god. Ooh, cinnamon, We've got cinnamon, of course ginger. We've ginger. got some cinnamon. Yummy. We've got some cloves. We got some allspice, and then we some baking soda so if you just give that a little mix real quick get okay. that together and then we're gonna start on already doing great don't worry about that <laughs> See, already pretty. doing great here Thank so you. then we've got some butter that's room temperature we're gonna get that going and we've got two sugars we've got some granulated sugar if you would just, just add them. that in yeah just pour it in and then you know this process we're gonna cream this get this all together and then we're going to get some packed sugar in here brown packed? sugar we want to pack it down how come? How come? yeah so we want to make mm -hmm. sure that we get it all the way in there because in terms of like how much it weighs that's what you need for this cake so you're gonna pack it in there and you just throw it in there oh it's about weight remember somebody said to use a weight uh, yeah it makes for accurate exactly if you like weigh things <laughs> and you're doing great already See? you got it, it in right next you know next time we'll Thank use a spatula you. it's all good and then we're going to add some molasses too because that's going to really molasses. amp up this molasses yes. so not this syrup. ginger molasses. molasses and actually like the funny thing about it is if you take like granulated sugar and molasses you actually make brown sugar oh Wait. interesting did you is know that, that? yeah no. you can use that as a nice should substitute. i pour this in yeah so actually help? we're going to add in our eggs next okay. so these are all room temperature too you're going to add them in one, one at a time, time. Plop. What? look at you you have but so much baking knowledge but why do you oh, I'm just watching you. Well, girl. you want to make sure that it gets into the it gets batter. All mixed in. Yeah, because then sometimes you're going to be like, oh, that didn't even get in now, there. Now, can I ask you, you a know? crazy question? Because I don't have one of these. Yeah. If you don't have one of these, you got a hand mixer? Yeah. Totally. Did I make whipped cream with? Yeah. Okay. Can you I can, pour this in? Yeah, you can pour that in. Look, what that is this goes heavy? in. Oh, actually, this is buttermilk. Oh, I yes. love buttermilk. Yeah. So, don't you love buttermilk? It's going to make now that should cake I go? light. And yeah, just start adding. Wait, what about in. this? You forgot this one. Oh, yeah. Add what some vanilla in. Add some vanilla in. We're just gonna just start at it free for all batter here yep, at this good. point. Nice job. This is what happens. This is the magic nice. of TV. You okay. start adding okay. in ingredients and then, and then you get this beautiful batter. Look at that. This is what you want it to look like. Peanut butter. Okay. Once you take your time, it, it almost does yeah. look like peanut butter. It looks like the texture. So you grease and flour your pan. <laughs> yes, grease and flour. Oh, this is what we want to do. Really are a big I, I, I know, study. I know. You keep saying that you don't, I but you study. do a great job. Okay, so so we want to make sure this does not stick. You want something like that, right? Okay. You don't want like Oh, there we go. Sorry, yeah. I can just turn it off. <laughs> nice. That is the magic of baking with so you Jenna. Put Thank all you. That in. Yeah, we're gonna get all this in, and then once it bakes up, you're Look gonna at get this, this beautiful Look at that. turn out. Look and, at oh, this. I'm sorry, gorgeous. Babe. Absolutely. Then do you scoop. What's yes. going on Okay, here? so here we're gonna mix that together. You really got well. it. Is that you like a it? caramel sauce? So actually, this is a maple glaze. So it starts with powdered sugar, okay. and then we add in some oh, maple syrup. Look at You're that. Like, look at that. Yes, and then we add in some milk, and then we're gonna get it to that consistency. Is that regular milk or condensed? It's just regular milk and so, so then, it looks thick but you want it to be thick because if it's not thick enough if it looks like it's too thin one, it's gonna it just won't, it won't yeah you're not gonna get it's that right mm -hmm. you're, it, it's how not did, gonna how did you I mean, how you did that? yeah it's you know, exactly so you want it to sort of like fall off the sides mm -hmm. and just kind of let gravity take over and mm -hmm. then you get something really pretty Hoda. Yeah, okay yeah, what? really really gorgeous. it's almost like <laughs> art class busy. at this point like we're just going okay and for what's it. this other thing you made right yeah now? oh and cheesecake. so this is an eggnog cheesecake okay. or actually a maple cheesecake i'm all thinking eggnog mm. right now and mm. it is fantastic what do you guys mm. think oh my god it's all yummy Drop it's one. also good you really are so talented thank you so you can get oh, this moist. recipe like today.com slash food. It is Superfood Friday, and we are ending the week on a sweet note. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer has two holiday dessert desserts that can go beyond a classic Christmas cookie. Starting with what I'm calling a mashup okay. of a New York style cheesecake mm -hmm. and a holiday spiced eggnog. And I'm calling it an eggnog cheesecake mm. dip. And it's so incredibly simple and rich and indulgent. And it's also a great way to satisfy cravings without excessive calories and sugar and saturated fat. All right, so what's the so, base? 
So this is light cream cheese, and it's uh -huh. really important that it's very soft. So I set it out on the counter for about an hour. Mm -hmm. Then I put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds. Oh. And here I'm adding in some light sour cream. Mm. Then we have a little bit of brown sugar. Mm -hmm. okay. And if you were to stir all of these things together with a little bit of cinnamon, mm -hmm. you would basically get just a cheesecake dip. But right. we're going to bring it over the top and make it eggnoggy. So I have my cinnamon. Mm. I have a little bit of nutmeg. Okay. And then just a pinch of cloves, ground okay. cloves. Okay. So let me put this over to the side. And, of course, a little bit of vanilla extract. Sure. Mm. So just a quarter of a teaspoon. You stir this up. And... Because the cream cheese is super soft, you should get a nice silky it's consistency. Creamy. Right. Yeah, yeah, creamy dip. It's That's so, so nice creamy. So We're hungry. We started eating it. It's delish. So the one last thing that I do, I take a little bit of crushed graham cracker, mm -hmm. and I put it right over the oh, top cute. with a dash of cinnamon for some color, mm -hmm. and I serve it with lots of antioxidant-rich yeah. fruit. So I have apples and pears, so uh, strawberries. Kinds of stuff in, it. in there. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Yeah. Very nice. in, by the way, including graham crackers. Uh, really, this is really good. With good. The graham so it's crackers. like you, you get the graham cracker crust. Of the yeah. Cheese cake. Very nice. Mm. Really good. Exactly. You've got the exactly. next one of my favorites, dates. I love dates. Me too. Let me tell you, this has quickly become my absolute new favorite snack. And in fact, last night, Ian said to me, uh, Joy, as I was prepping them, are you going to save any for the morning? Oh, nice. <laughs> They're really good. So I'm calling these chocolate peanut butter mm. covered dates, mm -hmm. but really, they taste exactly like mini Snickers bars. They do. So if you like Snickers, don't they? They're oh my amazing. Gosh. And four ingredients. So I'm starting with dates, and you can mm -hmm. either buy pitted dates or wow. you These can buy These dates with really the pit good. in. I'm so glad you love Wait, them. This I just can't just get like enough the of them. Snickers. Yeah. Doesn't it? It's a mini Snickers bar. Wow. How do you so get the peanut butter see... in the middle there, though? That's a real thing. Well, hold on. <laughs> so here's what we do. Yeah, so I, I put a little bit oh of peanut God. butter in the inside of each of them, okay. and that's going to give it a nice creamy mm. consistency. Then you pop in two salted roasted peanuts okay. mm. you cover it up mm. and now you know what we're doing we are smothering it mm. with a drizzle of melty dark chocolate mm. just like this so antioxidants and there antioxidants Wait, and now so i'm going to add a dusting of the uh, crushed peanuts right mm. over here. Now, all you need to do is you put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes because you want to firm that chocolate. Let me mm -hmm. grab a, like a and candy one bar. last thing. And Joy, could you what, substitute like almonds or something if you have a peanut oh, that's allergy? Good. So that's a great question. If you have nut allergies in the house, you can substitute cashews and cashew mm. butter or almonds and almond butter. Mm. There's all sorts of ways. Look at the inside of this. Can you so see that? So good. That looks yeah. so I might even freeze these. It's I might even freeze sure. them and use them later. It They're like a candy delicious bar. frozen. It's and really the good. last thing I'm just going to tell you, which uh -huh. is really fun, okay. if you want it instead of the peanuts on top, mm -hmm. yeah. you could put, let me, let me put this down over here. You could put, um, crushed candy cane oh. and so it just sort of like dresses it up and it mm -hmm. makes it a little bit more holiday festive or you could do a snow decor and yeah. you can sprinkle some shredded coconut over the top but the cool thing is those dates mm -hmm. they really do taste like caramel I can't believe and they it. have antioxidants really and fiber you're basically eating a healthy snickers bar it's, it's, i'm so happy you guys love it as much as you i would actually Pe prefer this on, one uh, i'm not even kidding this is uh. really good
Jessica. Don't you think it sounds like a great idea to fill your house with the sweet smell of mm -hmm. fresh baked cinnamon buns on Christmas morning? By the way, it smells like that right here, right now. It would be amazing. We just have just the person to help make that happen. We met Joanne Kennedy Brown recently when we Donna went down to surprise her at her New Jersey bakery. It's called the Gingered <laughs> Peach. It happened in October. And it was an honor for us. And she's someone who was honored by her community for giving back. Yeah, OK, so her baked goods looked so delicious. Mm. Hoda and I thought, OK, we need we, Joanne Yes, we here. wanted you there. We, we wanted, wanted you there to learn us. how to make these famous cinnamon ro rolls. And you say that anybody can do this. So easy. Anyone can do this. How okay. has this whole experience been for you? It's been crazy. <laughs> it's been crazy. It's been um, such a beautiful, wonderful surprise. Oh. And I think that um, it really meant a lot for the community. And I mean, the grants. Like they, they it was. It was By the way, you're, okay, you're adored and loved um, for everything you do. But will you will you show us how to make these? <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. So we start with wet. No. Okay. Fry. <laughs> <laughs> So far, we're off to a good start. To a great start. So yeah. we're not great at baking. What we're going to do is we're going to make brioche, which most people are afraid of, but they make amazing cinnamon buns, and it's incredibly easy. Okay. What we're starting off with is we've got some eggs mm -hmm. with um, some vanilla extract. We've got a, our flour, our mm -hmm. sugar, our salts in the bowl, and then we have our yeast here. Yeast. We so yeast. yes. So that I'll, was what was confusing me. It looked both wet and mm -hmm. dry. Yes. So here, our yeast is bloomed and it's mm -hmm. developed and ready to go. So for all the bakers at home, um, everybody knows what you. The yeast package you get in the yeah. supermarket, that's active dry yeast. Um, this recipe calls for instance, they are interchangeable, so don't stress one okay. to one. Use either okay. one. Okay. And also, if you're old school, you can, may have cake yeast in your home. Mm -hmm. And once again, one to one interchangeable Okay, okay great. So what, tell me what. So what this? we got here is, yep, so we have our yeast in our bowl. We're going to add our eggs and our vanilla. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay. And we're just going to give that a little bit of a turn. So you'll notice we have our hook attachment on because we're working. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Good job. Fantastic, that's perfect. That okay. brings it together. Okay. Then we're gonna add in all of our dry ingredients okay, so right into the bowl. Okay, so we're adding okay, all that pretend and it's then all we dry. add all this too? All goes in? <laughs> all this all right. too? So no, this is gonna wait. So okay. brioche is a two-step process. Okay. What we're gonna do is we, you're gonna mix this until okay. so it gets nice and silky. Let's keep moving on. And it comes here. together, Just and then we're going to introduce the butter. the butter after. Okay. So this when is you what get you this. got. This is what you got. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a little bit of flour on your countertop, and you want to roll this out to an 18 by 14, mm -hmm. approximately. So I'm okay. just going to bring this over a little bit with my rolling pin. Mm -hmm. And then this is the fun part. So if there's, if there's kids at home, get yeah. them involved. Okay. It's so fun. You take your butter. And we're just going to slather it oh, all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? If you're more, more, more. impatient like me, yeah, you can just, just, dump, it just it dump it on there, and you're going to okay. spread it all over the place. And then we have cinnamon sugar right and there. And then we've got cinnamon oh, sugar, I love cinnamon which sugar. you can make it rain. Oh, yes, make it rain. Yes. Just make it rain cinnamon sugar Merry all Christmas over. Merry Christmas to us. Uh, if you want to substitute nuts, throw some nuts in here. You want to throw some cardamom? Throw some cardamom. Whatever you want to do. Like. We want cinnamon sugar. So now how do you make it turn into rolls? So this is how you turn into rolls. You're going to start and flip over an edge just like that. and then. And just keep doing that. And you're going to pinch, pinch, pinch all the way across. Pinch, pinch, pinch. And because it's brioche, it's going to hold its shape. You see? Yeah, it really yeah. does. It's yeah. just going to so stay. Now, you so want now help? Yeah, so yes, yeah, we're going to give them. Want to get in there, Hoda? Roll it. I'm watching your video. She's you like, I'm going to watch. I'm Am watching. I going so fast? You, no, you're doing great. Good. So we're going to so, roll it, roll so it. So once it gets all the way up. Yep. Mm. Once we have so it all we're the gonna, way up. We just have a couple of seconds. So we sure. slice it and put it in in here. Yep. This is, how long do you bake it? So this is going to bake, so it's going to rise for about an hour and a half. You want it to double in volume. Okay. And then usually you're just going to kind of scoop your icing oh, on. Look, look, look. Right? I and then just it. so good. Yeah, and just it. give that a little bit of a I'm spread. I'm so sorry. I've been wanting to do this. That's okay. Yeah. Treat yourself. Mm. What's right here? Oh, 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 oh. Joanne, how? Hold on. I wish I knew. Oh. Mm. But you just spread on your icing. <laughs> it's Christmas. Mm-hmm. Make it. Christmas. Like Christmas. No. Mm-hmm. By the way. We're so happy. If anything's chemical, it's eating those. <laughs> it really so is. Joanne, you're Thank the best. You. best. Mm. For this recipe, y'all, make mm. it tomorrow. Go to today.com slash food. Mm. <laughs> Christina Tozzi is here to show us how to put a fun twist on some traditional holiday desserts. Christina is one of my favorites <laughs> and the founder of the popular bakery, milk bar that everybody loves. Christina, what are you showing us? Oh my gosh, hey. Ina, stop it, you're the best. <laughs> it's an honor to be here oh, with you. Okay, so, much so fun. we make all these different fun layer cakes at Milk Bar, and one of, the, one of my favorite things that we do at our Milk Bar bakeries, our flagships in New York and LA, is we do something called build a cake. And so I thought today, here's your friend, yeah. um, <laughs> that we would make the Ina Garden holiday special. Oh, you're making an Ina cake? 
beautiful. <laughs> yes, right? Like, why not? Okay. And there should, now, Christina has sent you a layer cake yeah, before. Did. I she mean, did. And it was amazing. Okay. It was outrageous. So. I know you love vanilla. Vanilla love is vanilla. like your flavor yeah. story. And I think when you're making desserts, you have to bake for the person mm. that you're baking for. You yeah. don't just bake what you want. You have to really speak to someone's soul. And that's when, when it's a real gift. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's it. So okay. we're starting with vanilla cake, yeah. a nice vanilla sponge cake. And then you know one of my favorite pro tips when making a layer cake is to soak the cake you first. You taught me that. And I always do it now. It's incredible. I was making a Boston cream pie, and Christina told me that, that, that if you do it, orange soak with it yes and we did orange and a little grand marnier oh. it tasted oh. so much better it keeps it moist it gives it lots of flavor how do you know how much so to, to soak it well so there is such thing as too much or too little okay. one cake soak will bring a cake back to life if you've over baked it maybe a little bit mm -hmm. too much mm -hmm. if we never under -baked, no, no, no never never <laughs> under bake it a little less soak but i like to say when you see a little bit of that milk come out the okay. bottom that's when uh. you know you're really at max and okay interesting. you do a milk soak so that's it's a, this is a milk soak but this is a vanilla mint milk soak oh. because I wanted to, I knew it's I your holiday good. special, yeah. right? Yeah. So taking vanilla flavors, building off of it, you can flavor your cake soak with anything. Orange, Grand Marnier, this is a little vanilla extract, a little mint soak. Mm, wow. And then I like to play with, you know, flavors and texture. So our first layer is... No, I need to tell everybody, I'm sure there's nobody that doesn't know milk bar, but the cakes are layered and you can see the edge. Oh, yes. Which is really important. It's an invitation in. It is. Right? It, it really is. is. Instead of seeing a cake that's all covered with chocolate, you can see all the layers. It makes it that much much more appealing and Doesn't enticing it really yes and so, irresistible uh, you're you too i can't with you <laughs> is it so frosting this is a liquid cheesecake so it's mm. basically cheesecake that's a little bit under baked we purposefully want that. No. incredible oh my god no. i'll skip that one. Then, <laughs> then some pretzel crumbs so oh. a little salty really br a little salt really brings out and the sweet we, right we just Get in there. you know i like these okay. all of your um desserts really have sort of old-fashioned um precedents there are mm -hmm. things that you remember like cereal milk mm. yes i love the idea of cereal oh. milk it's the cereal that's left in the bottom oh, of the yeah, bowl it's so good. after you've eaten the cornflakes i What's mean this next layer? so this next layer is a mint chip layer okay so really playing with vanilla notes, a little salty sweet note, and then a mint chip, because it is the holidays, and mint But is it a frosting, me, like a butter? Yeah, cream it's okay. a frosting, exactly. It's it's butter-based. We take some chocolate um, mm. shards and fold it into the frosting. Mm -hmm. I do this layer once again to build this cake up to create this masterpiece and over here. Okay. Oh, so this is what it looks like when it's built up. This is Look what it looks that. like when it's built up. Oh, we take the cake the ring off. I love that. You see so you all the see layers. All the it does, and yeah. then you can decorate it however you want. I've decorated, I'm a really big flavor story person, so <laughs> you're, the Ina Garden Holiday Special Flavor Story is mint and vanilla mm. with a little that salty sweet me. moments. Mint is the flavor story at Milk Bar right now. We have this incredible chocolate mint chip cake and chocolate mint chip truffles that are like based off of mintiness, but like that ice cream that you mm. can't stop eating. Mm. Like yes. Nice. Exactly. Peppermint bark snaps and then sugar, sugar cookies, which you can get in the aisles of the grocery store. But this is like our season to bake. Or you can just bake. eat the pretzels. Or just eat the pretzels, right? I know. I mean, that's chocolate. it, my friends. So you decorate them? Oh, how fabulous. So yeah, yes. then we decorate the top of the cake. Mm -hmm. yeah. Depending on what the flavor story is, you can always that's take fine. a little bit of those peppermint bits to you, bring some red and white in. I think decorate. we need to decorate. As Savannah's like, give me another pretzel. <laughs> I know. I'll take I, keep some eating, I know. I'm just crumbs. eating the. But this is also such a fun way to engage people in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, it's actually great, isn't it? You have everything lined the up. The kids it's could help fun. out. I too. mean, when people come over to your house, are they like, I know, how can I help in the kitchen? This is the task you put them on. It's I fabulous. You get your cake from Milk Bar. You say, get in there, start decorating. I love it. Christina Tosi from Milk Bar, thank you so much.
Well, we are back with Today Food, and we're joined this morning by Chef Brian Lewis, whose restaurant, The Cottage, has been getting rave reviews. Full disclosure, it's one of my favorite restaurants Thank in town. You. My wife, and Lindsay, and I, we love this place. He's here with a fun and delicious dessert that the whole family can get involved in. And this is a, a special one because this one belonged to your mom, right? It sure does. So my mom, MJ. Hi, Mom. Aww. She um, is absolutely awesome, and this is her, her go-to holiday. Every, every December, we... Enjoy these cookies since we were since we were kids, and oh. now my boys, Jude and Jacks, my twin boys, they make it with me. I love and it. Uh, to varying degrees of success, I'm going to pulse, get right into this, and show you how we What'd do you it. What did you just throw in there? All right, so we have hazelnuts and almonds, which you want to um, use blanched ones. Toast them for about 10, 15 minutes at 350 degrees okay. until they're just lightly brown. Let them cool. Put them in uh, with a little bit of flour. Right. And you want to blend that. Just so it's nice and nice and fine, okay. and the flour keeps it from getting too oily and nice and separate. And then we're going to have all these other delicious ingredients. So you have this almond hazelnut flour, if you will. Okay. All right. And then we're going to take. You want to get in here? Sure. Get some flour. Just regular all-purpose flour. All-purpose flour. Okay. Sugar. A little sugar. One egg. Uh, not eggs. yet on the eggs. Oh, yes, not sir. yet on the eggs. <laughs> Hold You're on. going to take your horses. spices. You got Hold cinnamon, horses. baking powder, salt, a little bit of nutmeg. A little nutmeg. All right. Put you to work here. Let's see. A little Let's lemon. A second. Lemon zest. Get a little bit of lemon zest. Lemon zest. So it's a really fragrant. What's beautiful. the word over there, Yum. boys and girls? So Are you nice. getting in on it? Delicious. On it. We stole one of the cookies too. So the nice, yeah. the nice part yeah. about this is it works really beautifully as a tart, which we serve in the restaurants, or as cookies, which we of course have at home. Mm -hmm. so you want to get in there. Okay. With blend that just a little right. bit. All right. Pulse it. Go. And right. we're good. Let's. Right. And that's a little cold butter there. Cold butter. I want to make sure we get it all in. So you got it. Moving on down. So here we're gonna have our. Raspberry jam, you can either make your own or, yeah. of course, um, any store bought sure. really great quality. You get your sugar. A little raspberry bit of your, jam's easy to make, right? Super easy. Raspberries, sugar, a little bit of lemon juice Frozen. at the end. Oh. Cook it down for about 20 minutes, jam. finish it with lemon juice, let it chill, and we'll go over to the tart. Dylan Dreyer's wheels are spinning mm -hmm. right now. She's like, yeah. hey, big I've, raspberry jam well, today. No, no. <laughs> I make it's super easy. tarts, but they're not this good. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And then we want to just roll out our dough. Mm -hmm. It's very important that when you take the dough, you want to refrigerate it for a good 20, 30 minutes to make sure it's not too soft. Okay. Because it's a really beautiful, pliable dough. And um, the nice thing is we make with the kids, with Jude and Jacks, we just make a bunch of cookies or tarts, yeah. and you can really just freeform it. It's not a, it's a very forgiving dough, mm -hmm. so it's really nice that way. Okay. So this we're going to roll great. it out, and then this over is, here. You're right. This would be great to do with the kids. This it's perfect. Because it's, it's delicious, and, of course, they love to eat it alone. You know, raw. Of course. Who doesn't? So we've rolled right. that out. We're going to get over here. So you're going to get your tart mm -hmm. just to about this size, put it in the refrigerator, yep. and then this is also, if you don't want to do a tart, there's your cookies. Well, cookies. Oh. Oh. Same right there. Uh, base. And, and we, and we do little, you want to cut them out like little circles like that, and then you can take little hearts. And the they're, yeah. they're almost too pretty to eat. I was going to say. <laughs> very pretty. Almost too pretty. My boys <laughs> like, to, might like to make little, they're football fanatics, so they Brian. like to oh, take well, little football. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, cute. thank you so much.
We just made the Christmas dinner. Now it's time for dessert. Please welcome our sweet all-star team of Adam Richman, Jeffrey Zakarian, and Jocelyn Delk Adams. We're making wow. everybody. It's time for desserts. Adam, are you starting us off with desserts? I am indeed. And oh, it's very okay. fitting that the lovely Jocelyn Good is luck. here because she inspired oh. this recipe okay. with, with our Thanksgiving segment. So this is um, partially inspired by something she mentioned that if you make brownies or even gingerbread cookies and they fall apart, you can repurpose them. So you can get a store bought oh, wow. brownie or blonde mix, add the components that make gingerbread gingerbread, add cinnamon, add nutmeg, add ginger um, to the brownies. You can put the bro broken brownies, if they come into out a little a bit messed up, yeah. into a oh. trifle. <gasps> Vanilla pudding mix, but you oh. make it with eggnog. So oh, as, stop as a Jew, it. these are, are the flavors I, I look to. <laughs> and uh, then you just can finish it off with a little bit of crumbled gingerbread. So it's a great one. And I have That's to say, beautiful. because I don't get a right chance here. to cook with you again, I am going to miss you so much oh. when you go. And I love you so much. And I think you're the best. So Thank this is a great you, holiday you. gift for me to be Thank able to you. come with Thank you again. Thank you, sweetheart. Jeffrey, so sweet. Jeffrey. That's so sad. But I, I have know. to visit you because I'm yes. in New York still. He, yes, you are. That's right. Speaking of you, I'm going to use some of your wine, and I'm going to mull some fruit. So this is great he because knows the way to my heart. Everything. <laughs> this is all from your pantry. This is all leftover. So if you have dates, if you have uh, apricots, cranberries, this Throw is made with there. fresh plums. Right. You can use pears, and you can smell this. And you put the mulling spice, some cinnamon, some star anise. Mm, and I yeah. think Christmas and holidays are about the smells and music. It's so all the mm. holiday music and smelling. And you can cook anything, and you're happy. My CDs and my and exactly. my wine. It's perfect. So we're going to take some of this fruit. We're just going to cook this my fruit. idea of heaven. We're going to cook this fruit with some sugar. Cook it down. Look how beautiful that is. That what are you doing And with that? we're going to take you're a store-bought oh, cheesecake. I know. Which is a pie. There's I nothing that wrong with you, that. Jeffrey, you're not a snob. Top. I'm not a snob, and you can look just use that. this and decorate. Look at that. Or ice cream. Look and how delicious that looks. And you can say, I made it, and then you mean it. Isn't that beautiful? That's so Wow, pretty. gorgeous. From me to you. That's awesome. Uh, hey, Jeffrey, is that is a cheesecake a, a pie or a cake? We're just having a quick I debate. Know, it's a cake to me. It's a it's cake. A cake. It's made with the sour cream And it's instead, got the and crust, and it looks like a pie. It looks like a key no, lime pie. pie. I, I so think it's a cake. the key lime pie looks just like that. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> we'll mull that wondering. over as you're mulling will that. Mull <laughs> you will mull it. Hi! Jocelyn, what you got, honey? We're making chocolate bowls. Okay, so this is so fun to get the kids involved because okay. I feel like around Christmas you need to get them in the kitchen and uh -huh. make those family sure. memories. So all you have to do here is we're going to take these water balloons. In fact, I would really love to see if Adam and Jeffrey could, like, blow these up. Let's see what you do. Okay, let's see what luck. you do here. Good Come on now. Come on. Come, on. Let's, one. Come on. let's see what you're doing. So this is going to be good. Okay. Let's. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, that's okay, pretty no, good. We're going to lay off the cigar. Once you have them blown up, you're gonna stick this right. You're gonna stick this right in, in some melted chocolate. But it can't oh my god! Too warm, right? Yeah, no. You just want it to kind of just set up, and you're gonna put this right into your refrigerator for about ten minutes. And kind of go happens? around the corners of it, this and then we're gonna have a little banana. Fun. We're gonna pop Look, these. Gonna happen, oh my gosh! Oh, 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 oh you're, see, you're so good at this already. Do you see how easy this is? It. I like okay, to we're do gonna this. pop this. Ooh. You want to do the honors? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ready, hold it. Okay, okay. Here you go. Okay. Hold on, you want to pop the purple it? One, I'll okay. Going. okay, one, two, three. That was just going okay. viral. That was you? like, I know, because it's, like, uh, right it's like jumping into a <laughs> I pool. Just, like, I know. It. And then it comes right it out. And then yours is like, I know balloon. your balloon just did heck? not want to play along. So, but this one is really nice. Thank you. You're <laughs> welcome. Right. It's my pleasure. By the way, that's an awesome, that's a little bowl you <laughs> yes, just created. I, know. I made a bowl. And you just put candy. You For can put anything recipes, in there. these go to today.com slash food. Hey guys, welcome to The Boost. We are fully in the holiday season. We're hoping to make your spirits bright today. So let's start with our very own Jenna Bush Hager channeling her inner Santa. She teamed up with Pay Away the Layaway to help deliver special holiday surprises to some remarkable families. There's holiday magic in the air at Burlington in Brooklyn, New York. And these unsuspecting shoppers have no idea what's in store for them. Guys, I am here in the layaway room where there are thousands of items for over 200 customers. We're gonna surprise them big today and tell them that we are paying off all of their layaway. It's all thanks to Pay Away the Layaway, a nonprofit that collects donations all year long to pay off balances nationwide. Since 2011, they've helped out 15,000 families. We've heard so much about so many families struggling this year yeah. and really stretching to make the holiday what they want it to be. Yeah. 
Executive Director Julie Sullivan paid the bill for every layaway with children's items. Our mission is to inspire hope and spread kindness. A lot of these people don't know if they're going to be able to buy some of these gifts. How do you feel like it spreads joy? When we tell someone that their lightweight balance is paid off, we see reactions that span from jumping up and down, clapping, cheering, to breaking down in tears and sobbing. And what we've really come to realize is it's really a stress reliever. Three, two, one, happy holidays! I was honored to join the team of holiday helpers as we began wrapping toy after toy. Here you go. You're welcome. We quickly got into the holiday spirit. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. It wasn't long before our shopping carts were filled with as many toys as Santa's sleigh. It was time to set up the operation for our big surprise. We placed hidden cameras on towers of toys, disguised our volunteers as store employees. And the most important part, calling in the shoppers. You can sign in. Thank you for coming today. They were invited to the store for what they thought was a promotional event. The crowd made their way back to the layaway counter. It was go time. Are you ready to go out? Let's okay, go. let's do it. Let's go. let's go. Hi, everybody. How are you? I have an announcement. Are y'all ready? Yes! Okay, well, thanks to pay away the layaway, we have a huge surprise. All of your layaways have been paid off. Yeah. <laughs> the holiday spirit instantly swept through the store. Can this take some pressure off and give toys to some kids? Yes. <laughs> My grandkids, yes. Your grandkids. Thank you so much. Customers were bursting with joy and also relief. Are you happy? I'm so happy. Does this help? I'm so happy. Let me laugh. Who are the presents for? Oh, my daughter and I have the last of you. Well, we're glad we could get you presents for your daughter. Yeah. Baby Tahara also had special items on layaway. What is she getting from here? I bought her a nightlight and some clothes. A nightlight and some nightlight clothes, clothes to keep her nice and warm. Yeah. Yes. So does this help y'all? 100, anything, anything else. The store's youngest customer was baby Caden, who is celebrating his very first Christmas. And are there some presents in there for him? Um, some shoes and some stuff. Shoes. He's grateful for it. He's grateful. Oh Merry Christmas to you, baby. Miel's shopping list included toys for her eight grandchildren. It feels so great because there's a lot of strain over Christmas and getting everything together when you have so much loved ones to buy for. Yeah. It's just for overwhelming relief. Overwhelming relief. Do you feel the Christmas spirit? I feel the Christmas spirit now. <laughs> yes, I do. I don't know. Woo! Like dancing. <laughs> Making spirits bright in an unexpected place and a beautiful celebration of the season of giving. Happy holidays! With Christmas almost here, we know Santa's elves are working very hard. Craig Melvin got to meet one of the honorary helpers who's devoted to giving back to her community. Good morning, good morning. At this intersection, Angela Thompson is the bright light. Paris, how was your day? Did you have a better day from this morning? For nearly two decades, she's been helping elementary school students cross the street safely. You get to see these kids grow up. You say hello in the morning, yes. you say goodbye in the afternoon. But it's not just a hello and goodbye for me. In the mornings, I can have a child having a bad day and I'm always, you know, how can we make your day better? And during this time of year... Let me clock out first. Angela spends her time off the clock spreading holiday cheer. And this one as well is 25% off. By organizing her very own toy drive, shopping for gifts to give to the children who brighten her day. She is the good cousin guy. She'll come out of nowhere just to make sure we get across the street. Let's go back to the beginning of this toy drive. How was this born? There was a young mother, and she was just crying and talking about what she couldn't do for her children. And so I told her, I said, hey, see me next week. So that week when she stopped and saw me, I had all of these gifts and her tears, oh my God, her tears just, it, it, it's just, it touched me. It just made me wonder how many young parents are going through something. Thanks to donations from her family and friends, like her daughter, Asia. 
Angela makes her list. 337.56. Then checks it twice. This year, Angela and her hardworking elves are wrapping over 70 gifts. Each toy wrapped a gift in more ways than one. I'm helping out because the love for Angie and her passion for what she does. Angela and Santa Claus have a plan. They will deliver the wrap presents to students right here on the last day before winter break begins. I suited up with Angela, stop sign in hand. Oh, we've got one to meet the kids on her shopping list. Okay. All right, let's go. Here we, here we go. go, Craig, we're moving. We go. We're moving, What's up, Craig. Man? You're on a nice list or the money list? Hi. <laughs> OK. You look like you're probably on the nice list. Merry All Christmas. All right, Craig, you got to be oh, some life back. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you are hilarious. Sorry. Craig, you're going to get fired on your right, first right. day. What are you the first time? You can't get past me. No, no. I'm not losing a kid on my watch. No. How was your school day? Ah, oh yes! Yes! <laughs> Angela, what happens if you run out of gifts? The time that I did run out of gifts, a good Samaritan stopped and brought me gifts. But this time, we didn't want to take any chances. We took Angela to Fisk Elementary School. This is where those kids we met attend class. Angela had no idea what was waiting for her. Oh, wow. What is wow. this? Wow. Hello. Hi. Y'all know Miss Angela? In honor of your hard work, the folks at Hasbro have decided that they are going to give a gift to every child in this auditorium on your behalf. Santa elves, y'all come on out. Now let's travel to a small picturesque town where a very special ice skating rink has transformed daily life in a remarkable way. He's, here's Harry Smith with that story. In these days when it feels like there's more going on that pulls us apart than that which draws us together, we present this contradiction, the brand new ice rink in Springfield, New York. I mean, it's just crazy. It's like this every day here. Galen Cricky is the town supervisor. The day we visited, wind chill was six below zero. And this kind of weather, people out here shoveling away and people donating skates. We have 50 pairs of skates and they're all donated. Kids, adults, beginners, all are welcome. And by the looks of it, all are darn happy to be here. How big of a plus has this been for your town? Oh gosh, huge, huge, very big. There's not a lot to do here in the winter. Maggie Picorni teaches middle school and comes here often to unwind. People come and want to get out, you know, after work, after school, get some fresh air. It's a great place to be. It sure looked great to us. And how we wondered did this come to be? A $5,000 budget and a vision. I thought about it for two weeks, and it kept nagging at me and nagging at me, and I was nervous because I knew it was going to be a lot of work. But when you have an idea that strong, you can't ignore it. The frozen equivalent of Field of Dreams, says Ashley Sykema, who runs the parks here. When we built it, we started saying, if you build it, they will come, and they came. <laughs> and they keep coming more and more every day. Built in large part by town folk, ultra-capable Amish neighbors who already had ranks of their own. Out of respect for the Amish, we blurred some images. None of them would take any payment. The town offered to pay them, and they wouldn't take any payment. And Amish men, Wayne Stutzman, who led the effort, even came up with a backyard version of a Zamboni to keep the ice smooth. Normally, we're out here for at least two, at least. Uh, we're coming up, I think we're actually coming up on four hours now, so. Uh, <laughs> Benjamin Munyon and his daughter Bridget are here most every day. How much do you like coming out to the skating rink? I like it a lot. You like it a lot? <laughs> I can tell. 
because I see no sign in you four hours in of like, it's time to go, Dad. I don't see anybody. You're not tugging on your dad's sleeve. No. But I think we would spend all day out here if we could. It's not fancy, this ice rink, but it seems to function in a way that far exceeds anyone's expectations. When we all get together and we spend time together and we get to know each other and focus on what we have in common, that joy just builds and spreads. Imagine one of these in your town. You know what they say, if you build it. After the break, we're kicking off the holiday season into high gear with sisters who show us just what it takes to be a Radio City Rockette. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Boost. It's Christmas time, and Dylan Dreyer is spreading happiness and cheer by bringing us along with her family to a Christmas tree farm. Take a look. Can you guys believe it's time to get our Christmas tree already? Yeah. Are you so excited? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, the boys, and I took a trip to Elwood Pumpkin and Christmas Tree Farm in search of the perfect pine to enjoy throughout the holiday. We've got Lee here. Hey, Lee. What do you recommend? Where do we start? A lot of people make a mistake at a big tree farm like this. They, they choose the nicest tree, but they don't think about longevity. I mean, these, these not only are they tall, but they're perfectly shaped and they're absolutely beautiful. That doesn't happen by accident. Dave, I love Every it. one is perfect. I want a big one. Brian, we have a ceiling. I'll go full Griswold. Cal, tell him I'm to get the biggest one, OK? Cal, don't listen to him, buddy. This happens to be right. a Norway spruce. It's what they use in Rockefeller Center. I'm sure you see, have okay, seen that yeah. tree, right? <laughs> According to Lee, spruce trees are more likely to lose their needles as time passes, especially without proper care. I've had people that want them and say they have success with it. It didn't take long before we fell in love with a tree. Oh. Remember this tree. But we wanted to look around before deciding. I like the height, but it might be a little skinny. All right. You don't think it's a little too short? Yeah. Well, I guess it's not too short for you. Well, you know the hard part now? We have to cut it down. It was Brian's time to shine as he took on the task of chopping down our tree. Can we get a stunt double? <laughs> Look at Daddy cutting down a tree. The whole tree's wobbling. Oh, here it goes. Oh, there it goes. Come on, guys. Help me. Help me. Help me. Ah, it's like Pull the tree. Pull the tree. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Is this the first time you ever cut a tree? Yes. Sure. Cheers, hands. No calluses. <laughs> but the job wasn't done. Here we go. We had to get the tree all the way back to the car. After a while of sitting in our backyard, it was finally time to bring in the tree. Look at this. And upon inspection, we found a little surprise within its branches. There's a bird's nest in here. Ah! <laughs> Are you guys ready for some ornaments? Yeah. One of my favorite family traditions is talking about each of the ornaments as we put them on the tree. Daddy made this when he was little. It's a gingerbread man. Yeah. But on the other side, he burnt the cookie. What? 
asking Calvin. This is a replacement for the one when you threw a football at the tree. Oh, sure. Whatever you want. I'll hang it on the tree. Right in the front, buddy. Yes? Yeah, put it on the tree. And before we knew it, it was Christmas in the Fishera household. We're done with our tree. There we go. There we go. Nice! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Now, let's meet two sisters doing those signature holiday high kicks side by side for the very first time as Radio City Rockettes. NBC's Joe Fryer has their story. For so many of the Radio City Rockettes, before they were dancing on the stage, they were watching from the audience, including Jordan and Danielle Betcher. You probably get this a lot, but are you sisters? <laughs> we, we are sisters, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Danielle, the oldest, remembers seeing the Christmas Spectacular with her grandpa when she was 13. And he must have seen that look on my face of just like pure joy because he leaned in and he goes, you know, someday you could do that if you wanted to. Ten years ago, she did. And seven years ago, her sister did. This year, for the first time, they're right next to each other on the kick line. I just know that she has my back both on and off stage. Danelle Morgan also has their backs. Old Saint Nick will ride through the sky. She's a swing, ready to step in when someone is out. It's an incredibly challenging job. We don't just learn the one track that a single rocket will do in the show. We learn the entire show. Sometimes do you only have like a moment's notice before you have to jump in? There have been times where it's mid-show and then all of a sudden we're on the stage. An 18-year rocket vet, she knows her parents could be in that audience. They pop up and they show up in the front row for a show where I'll, I'll hear my dad cheering and I'm like, oh my gosh, my parents are here. They didn't tell me they're here, but they're here, okay. So your parents don't always warn you that they're coming? Oh no, they don't always warn me. I can see my mom's glasses reflecting with the lights and it's just really special to know that there's love coming at me while I'm performing. Reminder, the Rockettes are not just in sync with each other, but with you too. Joe Fryer, NBC News, New York. Still ahead, we'll pay a visit to some of the most festive spots in the world. We're back after this. back on the boost with holiday movies on practically every single channel and seasonal songs playing everywhere you go it seems that everybody's full of holiday spirit joe fryer is back with more on how christmas cheer is spreading all across the country in manhattan you'll find a bar that's already decked the halls and ceiling why did you decide to come here because i love christmas miracle on ninth is a holiday pop-up bar the other 10 months of the year, it's known for tequila and mezcal, but today drinks are served in Christmas-themed mugs. Christmas. It's Mariah 
Mariah Carey plays once an hour. It takes us four days to, you know, redecorate the entire bar, replace everything with the, the kitschiest Christmas things we can find. This year, Miracle and its counterpart, Sip and Santa, have opened nearly 200 pop-up bars nationwide. These like reservations came out in early October and I was already looking at them. Christmas trees are going up faster and Christmas tunes are hitting the charts earlier. Spending on non-gift items like clothing and decorations forecast to jump 25% this year. Being in Christmas time, like this is, this is when we bond the most. It's as if we're yearning to live inside our favorite holiday flicks. Christmas is the greatest day in the whole wide world. Whether it's Elf, which is celebrating its 20th anniversary. Hard to believe that just two days ago, none of us even knew one another. Or newer fare offered on networks like Hallmark, Lifetime, Netflix, and more. Entertainment Weekly counted 116 new films this year. Hilton even has Hallmark Channel inspired hotel suites. Cheers. For those who want to take the spirit and spirettes home, holiday cocktail classes are in full gear. Get up and smell it. At the Cocktailery in Charlotte, customers want wintry recipes like apple spiced cozy cognac, capturing that just cold enough for a scarf while reuniting with your childhood crush in your hometown feeling. We are slammed with people coming in and looking for those um, holiday flavors, cranberry, pecan, all those, you know, warm and cozy flavors. And the holiday cheer isn't just limited to land. Sometimes, as you can see here, it spreads to the water. We set sail on the Coco and Carol's cruise put on by Classic Harbor Line. Those who hopped aboard say after a stressful news year, they need a little Christmas now. Everyone's in good mood, everybody's happy. You're about to have time off of work. So whether you're seeking a ship or a sip, for many there's no such thing as too early or too much. At Christmas time, the stately homes of Britain come to life with opulent decorations. And that is certainly true at High Clare Castle, better known as the real life Downton Abbey. It's where the popular show and movies were filmed. NBC's Kelly Cobiea got a special tour behind the scenes at the British Castle. Christmas time, Britain's stately homes come to life with opulent decorations. And that's certainly true at High Clear Castle, better known as the real downtown or Downton Abbey, where the popular show and movies were actually filmed. NBC's Kelly Cobiea is there enjoying the festivities. Ooh, show us around, Kelly. Guys, good morning. Well, it takes nearly a year of planning to get this castle Christmas ready. And we were given an early invite to see all the trimmings with the Lord and Lady themselves. Highclere Castle, a festive treat at Christmas. What a tree. It's beautiful. Now this screams Christmas. And it's how tall? It's 25 foot, which means I think it's bigger even than Windsor Castle's Christmas tree. <laughs> it's all about the bragging rights. Lady Carnarvon told me putting up the 25 foot Christmas tree this year was an Instagram hit, a team effort needing at least 20 people. And with true love and in Christmas's past, the Highclere tree featured in memorable scenes from Downton Abbey. This year, there's a historical family theme. So the King theme Tut. is about ancient Egypt and Tutankhamun and the gold and the treasures. I visited Egypt last month, a hundred years after the discovery, and saw the treasures of Tutankhamun in the Cairo Museum. It was Lord Carnarvon's great-grandfather, the fifth Earl of Carnarvon, who discovered the tomb in Egypt along with Howard Carter. But when he first started out there, all he found in his first season of, of moving thousands of tons of earth was a mummified cat. Many of us would have quit at that stage, and far from that, he was so determined it actually spurred him on. The castle boasts 300 rooms, many like the library, lavishly decorated for the Christmas holiday. How many trees are in the castle? There are 60 inside and outside. Six zero. Six zero. That's a big Christmas. The next one to your left is going. And in the dining room, the immaculate table is laid out with precision, ready for a feast. And with celebrations in mind, it's time for a holiday cocktail. Louis Coelho is Highclere Castle's head butler. He makes their signature gin and tonic. Let me do a bit of rosemary. Rosemary actually does have a sort of a Christmassy flavor as well. It does actually, it's quite warm thing, and orange. Well, should I try? You can smell the orange and the rosemary. Oh, 
keeping in the spirit, Downton style. Ready to ring in the new year. The castle is open to the public for most of December for afternoon teas and Christmas cocktails. And after a couple of weeks of private family time, they'll start planning all over again for next year. Stick around for another joyful story that's coming up after the break. on the boost right here with one final feel-good story. Check it out. Uh, this one's all about getting a little boost from your friend. So a school bus driver recorded this video saying this happens daily when a young student exits his bus. Ready, David? Look at me. Give me a thumbs up. All right. That's right. Go, David. What a cheering wow. squad wow. from the back wow. of the bus. Fast. The bus driver, by the way, claims to be the fastest kid alive. He always runs. Uh, look at him go. Look Wait, at him go. Run home. You have a cheering squad waiting. Come on. He's like Running David home. Gump. Running home? Man. Yeah. Fastest kid alive. Aw. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed today as much as we did as we count down to Christmas. We will see you right back here tomorrow on Today All Day. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. Hello and welcome back to Pop Star Plus. One of the best parts of the holiday season is indeed blasting Christmas music. You know, I love music. I've been doing this since practically October. So today we thought it'd be fun to celebrate all the songs that makes the season bright. From Cher to Megan Trainer and even our buddies Hoda and Jenna, you're in for a real treat today. We've been counting down to this one. Hoda and Jenna have released their very first original song for the holidays. It's called A Carefree Christmas. And they've teamed up, thank goodness, with vocal coach and social media sensation Cheryl Porter, who helped them in a large part there to produce their holiday single. And it was quite the task. From writing all the lyrics to learning how to hit the perfect notes, Hoda and Jenna gave us a behind the scenes look at how it all came together. Okay, it's starting to feel a lot like Christmas around here because it is finally time to release 
our original holiday song. We've okay. been waiting for this. Yeah, this all started way back in May. So Jenna and I met up with this really cool vocal coach. That's her. Her name is Cheryl Porter. We wanted some simple voice lessons. Well, Cheryl, by the way, has more than 10 million YouTube subscribers. She's got this crazy, unique method of teaching people how to sing. She was an incredible teacher. She actually made us believe that we could sing and now we've created our own holiday song. And and it's not just the two of us you'll Obviously. be happy to hear. We have Cheryl on board and we got to work. But before we drop our single, which we're very excited and slightly nervous about, yeah. here's a little teaser. There are certain dreams that are almost too big to dream. Yes. Dropping a single at Christmas time seems like a huge dream, but guess what? We're doing it. We are doing it. Is this, Wait, like, is this really happening? It's happening. It's gonna be a carefree Christmas. You got it. So the name of the song is Carefree Christmas. We just wanna bring some cheer, some joy to people all over the world. Christmas is supposed to be beautiful, and it is, but it ends up also being, I've gotta check off my yes. list. I didn't get something for that. I Frazzled. feel guilty about that. Frazzled, running back and forth to the mall. So it's like, listen, you can be busy on this Christmas. It can be stressful, but you can still be happy. And carefree. You can still be happy and carefree. <laughs> so this is Hit Pause. Yeah for our Carefree Christmas song. And you might feel your blood pressure drop a yeah. little, right? You yes. might feel a little bit more calm. And it might just remind people what? that when they're calm, they have more fun. For the holiday. That's right. Butter. Holden and Jen have never sung in a studio before. And I'm happy as a vocal coach to hold their hand through it all, but I know they got it. Cheryl could teach that chair <laughs> to sing. So she sat with us and we matched her tone yes. and we learned literally to go from non-singers to below average singers. Yeah, okay. but you can do any kind of notes you okay. want to because all Ooh, the notes are too I don't and know I'm any good. notes. But I love you. Yes, you know. <laughs> Jen and I have done so many things together. We have gone to cheese making school. This is beautiful, Oda. You made a really lovely one. The, the polar plunge. The polar plunge. You didn't die. <laughs> The two of us went sailing on the Hudson. That's true. Oh, yeah, the Statue of Liberty. Oh, God. Ow. <laughs> what have we not done yet? Drop a single. Drop a single. So and it's time. You say why. We say why not. Jen and I are always in harmony on our show. So we thought, why don't we put that harmony to the test? How much harder is singing than talking? Can't be. Not much. Not much. We love Christmas. So here we go. Let's drop it, baby. <laughs> Fa la 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 Christmas. It's better than that. It's, it's better. better than that. It sure is. All right, you ready? OK, are you ready? I am ready. Without further ado, here's the music video for our original Christmas song, A, A Carefree Christmas, Christmas with Hoda and Jenna. Christmas Day. Buy a small tree like a cup before the holiday. Fire's roaring, weird she's bought and joy is in the air. No social dilemmas all around us. Let's let down our hair. It's gonna be a carefree Christmas. Stop and smell the pie. Bows of holly make us jolly. Pretty good girls, nice work. Hoda and Jenna are not the only ones in 30 Rock making music. Our buddy Jimmy Fallon teamed up with Grammy winner Megan Trainer for a fun holiday duet. It's truly the collab we never knew we needed around the holidays, and the stars told us all about it. Oh my yeah. goodness, exactly. you know. <laughs> 
That's why I won't move. I said, I had, you got it. Like, the, you got it live. Is, okay, wait, 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 wait. How did this come to be? Whose idea was it? Who thought of it first? I've been trying to write a Christmas song for Jimmy Fallon for years now because and, there's a rumor. They're like, he's working up another one. He's working up a whole Christmas album. It's going to be huge. And then um, I finally get a call through my friend, Gian Stone. Gian Stone, I John love you. Stone, yeah. Okay. Um, and he's like, Jimmy wants to do a song with you. And I was like, what do you mean, so what, Jimmy? So what did you have, Jimmy? What was the beginning? So I, I sent I sent Megan a, a, a voicemail of what I thought the song could be. Okay, I listen. Uh, I thought it was going to be called Rap, your mic. Wrap It Up. Okay, and this is embarrassing, but this is what I sent. Turn it to him in the star, wrap it up, wrap it up. Wanna turn him in my star, wrap it up, wrap it up. Wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. All right, so anyways, so you so said, let's just you say said that. that. I didn't hear back from Megan Trainor. I didn't months. know how to respond to that. She's like, <laughs> new call, new for uh, sale. Who's this? Uh, Who's this? Uh, so uh, what did like, you do? I was like, okay, I have to like fix this, and then I have to respond like, that was so good, Jimmy. <laughs> but I you, think. Jimmy? I was like, yeah. that's so cute. You know what we could do, though, is like a doo thing, because ah. I'm the doo girl. And and we could say, wrap me up like a present. And oh, you're just instead silly of wrap goose. it up, wrap me yeah. up. So wrap we get on the like, phone, finish and, and she calls me, um, and she goes, well, I, I worked on a scratch, too. And her scratch is <laughs> a thousand times <laughs> better. <laughs> it's basically the song. It's like, wrap me up. How long did it take you to do that, Megan, by the way? Um, I got on the Zoom. We don't, you don't even know this. We got on the Zoom a half hour earlier than Jimmy because yeah. we were like, we got to figure something out and it's like be <laughs> prepared. I want to do my homework so that when Jimmy comes on, he loves it. Then I basically auditioned the chorus for him and I was sweating and crying and throwing up and then he oh. loved it. And I was like, oh, you do? But we were on the FaceTime for like an hour and a half, maybe? Yeah, hour and a half. We, we, wrote we wrote, she's like, Quick. do you want to write the song with me? I'm like, oh my God. I like, in my head, I'm like, it's already written. But yes, of course. Yeah. I'm happy. Like, like, did you not get it. the voicemail? Am I getting credit for yeah. that? Like, did you not person. hear my voicemail? Yeah. <laughs> I see the germ of the idea. Rap yeah. is rap and then rap me up. Never give up, anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, never give, give up. up. But Megan gave it a nice zhuzh. Yes. Sure. She gave it the best judging of all time. It was massive. So what's it like to perform together? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just a match made in heaven. It really is. It's, it's different for me. Like, for him, it's like, oh, but probably, I don't know. <laughs> but for me, I'm like, oh, my God. You know, like, when my mom and dad are everywhere with me, and I'm just trying not to cry the whole time with happy tears, because no. I have loved you my whole life. And, like, Aww. you're so musically talented. And to be like, we have a song together, and I get to go everywhere with Jimmy in she New York. She's a genius and, and brilliant writer, as well as performer and singer. but. Do you remember the one time you came on the show and I forget what song it was you were performing? I fell down. And you fell down. You fell down on, on Fallon? Yeah, yes. cool. I thought that was the name of the song. Oh. It was viral. I fell down, I fell down, I fell down. Uh, so I so she, she did the thing, it was great. At the end, she turned around and just fell and laid on the ground. And I go, <laughs> well, and so I went down and laid next to her. Oh, and I go, did? we'll be right back with more Tonight Show. I couldn't move, I was so embarrassed. And I go, do you want to so much better? I go, do you want to redo it? And you go, no. You I said no? Yeah. Wanna... That's the magic of yeah. Megan Trainer right there. <laughs> you said no, because you are okay. you are exactly as you are. <laughs> and by the way, we should say that this is a hit maker. You write songs, you gave you give one to J-Lo, you give one here. She's been doing this, writing awesome, yeah. cool songs. You're a machine. You're she fantastic. Is. One of the most <laughs> talented people I've ever met She's in my life. Incredible. You guys, it's weird to take this time. I just feel like we need to ask you about Hoda and Jenna's Christmas hit. I hope that's Have you heard about it? Because I know it's competition oh. for you. Do you know about it, Megan? It's called A Carefree Christmas. Yeah. Have you heard it? Have you seen it? their video? Why didn't no, I write it? Go ahead. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I think we have to go to commercial. Maybe you should have. We have to go to commercial. Come on. Oh, I know her on TikTok. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, you sound good. Wait. Is, is that Jenna's real hat? Can we show Megan? Is that Jenna's real this hat? This is so awkward. What do you hat. think? I see her wear the tiny Wait, What do we think? She wears that tiny hat to work. <laughs> Jenna always <laughs> wears that little hat. <laughs> Okay, I think it's great, but like we're writing. Okay, <laughs> it's over. We're doing a duet. I mean, Sorry, Jimmy. Let's do it. Oh, how fun was that? I love Megan Trainor. She's the best. And Jimmy, too, as always, so good. That makes the holidays that much brighter. Coming up, comedian and actor Matt Rogers dishes on his latest collaboration with a surprise guest.
Welcome back. It's Popstar Plus, and Matt Rogers recently released his album, Have You Heard of Christmas? He says it was seven years in the making. Wow. One of his surprise collaborations on the album is with the SNL star, Bowen Yang, who's very funny, and the duo gave us the scoop. If you did not know, oh my gosh, these two, by the way, best friends. They host a very popular podcast. It's called Las Culturistas. You got it. Yeah, of course. You did it. First of all, that was brilliant. Thank you. Um, I was laughing. The fact that the Jenna Bush Hager comes would you tell it's us rock why and roll. that works? It's like, I want to see Jenna Bush Hager comes out. The, the bill, it's fun to sing. It's got a rock and roll vibe. Yeah, your well, name. You, you, made got my, it. you made my year last year. And the fact <laughs> that you have taken this one hit. Yes. And turned it into a whole album? Yeah. I mean, is that a dream? Well, you know, I had a special last year on Showtime called Have You Heard of Christmas? And um, it's all original music. So I guess the goal with yes. it would be to record that. And then Capitol Records was like, you want to do a record deal? And I was like, are you sure? Are you positive? <laughs> um, and they were. And so here we are. And I had the song Rockefeller Center. I thought the only way to make it better would be, of course, to it's add a Vogue fun. Madonna inspired <laughs> breakdown by Bo and Yang yes. of Rockefeller Center. Look, this is our little co-working space between yeah. the three of us, yes. and um, it's a wonderful place to come. There's a sweet green in our office. It's, there sure yeah. is. That, I, by the way, it is the best spot. Now, <laughs> Mariah Carey may be biting her nails to the quick. She should be very afraid. Because somebody is <laughs> and zooming and share, too. And share. Yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever met Mariah? Uh, well, we actually did meet Mariah did. in, uh -huh. like, a fleeting moment. So, well, we, it was, was, it it was it? an important moment, though. We were doing a Peloton. Class. We yes. were guests in a Peloton class for Cody Rigsby, who, who we all love. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, you have a clip of it. This was that's that's me helping her down. That's Matt helping her down. And But that was when she announced it's time. Every yeah. day she announces it's time when, you know, the season starts and when All I Want for Christmas Wait, is... Was Wait, so, surprise? So, yes. it was it a surprise? So she was doing a bit, like, where she was going to come out and say to Cody Rigsby, who's uh, the Peloton yeah. guy, he, she was like, <laughs> it's time, and they were going to do a little bit. But of course she's wearing, like, 50-inch heels. Yeah. She's up on a perch. Yeah. So she turns to me, I'm in the Peloton thing. I don't Peloton a lot. And she goes, can you help me down? I almost tore my ACL getting out of that chair. I was like, Mariah will not collapse. But also the fact on that you... Watch. Not on my watch. The Hold fact on. that you just called the bike a chair is a... Oh, yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. I, was like, I couldn't have snapped out of that chair, bike, Peloton, <laughs> thing I'm doing. Just snapped it up. All right, so you have a moment with Mariah. Yeah. You have Lady Gaga's on your... I had a moment with Lady Gaga yeah. where Lauren Michaels and to the entire staff. There she is. The entire staff that night that Bad Bunny hosted. And Lady Gaga's going to intro the second song. And I screamed in front of all 200 of my co-workers, <laughs> Lady Gaga! <laughs> Which is the only appropriate reaction. Right, of course. But then I told her that at the after party in a crowded restaurant. I said, when Lauren told me you guys were, you would be here, I said, Lady Gaga! I screamed her name to her face. <laughs> and, and, and? So humiliating. And she, she was like, was she I think a flash of, like, terror flashed. Like, I bet she liked face. it. Because when he screamed Jenna Bush Hager, yeah, I liked she, it. Yes. No, we, we have very little it. chill around our Love heroes. It. So it's, this yeah. is... We're into so it. Yeah. Um, okay, first of all, when you were young, did yeah. you sing? Yeah. Like, is this something you foresaw in your future and whole album dropping a tour? I mean, I think that like any kid you're like in your yeah. you're in your like bedroom yeah. and you're singing into the hairbrush or what have you yeah. whatever household object you want to sing into <laughs> you really can but I don't think I ever saw it for myself you know what I mean um, and then all of a sudden one day it was through doing this as a comedy, comedy show yeah. so I started this as a one man show in the West Village I was like you know it would be funny I think I saw an interview with Mariah Carey yeah. and the interviewer was like she kind of said the quiet part out loud. She was like, well, you must be making money every year, huh? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I think that's so funny. I want to do like a solo show where it's me releasing an album just to make money off Christmas. <laughs> and six years later, it worked. It worked. Well, I guess it's the year for first holiday albums. And up next, we've got another one to discuss from the iconic Cher. That's next on Popstar Plus.
Well, thanks for sticking with us. Christmas came early for music fans. The one and only pop culture icon herself, Cher, has released her first ever holiday album. She did our tree lighting concert, looked great out there uh, by the tree. Cher, nice enough to sit down with Harry Smith to talk about the inspiration for the album and more as she reflected on her career. Take a look. I bought your record, I cash money. I made the investment. Okay, tell me it wasn't worth it. It was worth every penny. The thing that occurred to me immediately was why hadn't you done this before? Because I didn't want to. Really? I didn't want to because I couldn't find myself in Christmas records. I didn't really want to sing any of those songs. And then my record company was really good. They just let me go to my house and then hand them the master. So here comes Cher, Christmas, a half dozen brand new songs and a half dozen classics. I have never had anybody on any album. Ever? Ever. Wow. Duets with legends like Cyndi Lauper, Michael Buble, and Stevie Wonder, whose What Christmas Means to Me evokes the joys of Christmas's past. I called him and I was really nervous. And I said, Stevie, I did this song and I can do part of it really well, but there's some part I just can't do and I need you to come and do it. And he said, consider it done. And then I ran around my room, I swear to God, I ran around my room, I jumped up and down in my bed screaming, Stevie Wonder's gonna be on my album. And so too, Darlene Love, now, a duet Cher first sang back up for her in 1963. We found a photo. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, I'd love to have that. Yeah, I was 17. Along with the Christmas album comes the 25th anniversary edition of Believe. How amazing is it that Believe is 25 years old? It's not that amazing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> pisses me. It pisses <laughs> out of me and you can't put that out yes we can okay good no it just is like what is this so you and age not you're not friends no my mother didn't mind but i do i yeah. hate it i had a tough time with 70 i would admit it like i mean like really knocked me in a hole for a while i'd give anything to be 70 <laughs> Cher gives off some crazy great energy. Interviewing her is a blast. Are you writing a memoir? Yes. It's very difficult because I've lived too long and I've done too many things. And so it would have to be like an encyclopedia, truthfully. A tome divided into the multiple Cher eras, including movie star. So during the pandemic, and we all sat around watching movies, and I went back and watched Moonstruck. You just knocked the daylights out of that part. It was just so great. I know. <laughs> the Oscar and Grammy Award winner, known for those unforgettable performances. They have such great chemistry together. I love when they are in the same room. Thank you to Harry and, of course, Cher. After the break, our neighbors, the Rockettes, were nice enough to swing by, and they'll tell us about their Christmas spectacular coming up.
We're back with more Pop Star Plus. Christmas in New York, let's be honest, is never the same without a visit to the Radio City Christmas Spectacular. It's an incredible show. From all the music to the choreography, the show is now, I think it's in its 90th season, and it seems to get better and better every year. This year, there's a special new addition. The Rockettes joined us on the plaza here for a sneak peek. Take a look. More than 70 million people wow. have seen the Rockettes perform in the Christmas Spectacular in the 90 years since its debut. Well, this year, the show will feature beloved holiday performances, including this one, which we love, and the recent edition of the Frost Fairies. Of course, an appearance from Santa Claus. With us now are two longtime Rockettes. We've got Bailey Taylor, Bailey and Taylor. Welcome, guys. Hi. First of all, Jen and I love to bring our families to this, and we are always so excited about something new. The fairies which is a very cool part is something that kids love because they actually see drones as well right yes last year we brought in a newly reimagined scene called dance of the frost fairy yeah. where the rockets wear beautiful fairy wings and there's fairy drones that fly high above the audiences <laughs> this year though more drones than ever more and drones something that you can only see here at Radio City yeah. Music Hall we're so thrilled to open the show this Friday November 17th we run through January 1st and come on over, come check us out. Oh, of course. We do it, we do it every single year. Every year. I feel like Hoda's one of your first guests. <laughs> yeah. We read that you guys kick 200 times per performance. We can only kick about <laughs> four times yeah. in our dance Maybe. routines. How do y'all prepare to, to have that type of stan stamina? I can't believe it myself. 200 kicks in a show, sometimes four shows in a day. It really takes a lot of teamwork from the ladies behind me. We rehearse six hours a day, six days a week to create the Christmas wow. Spectacular. So it's an incredible amount of hard work, but we really enjoy our jobs. Now you guys have been on this team for 10 years. Is that right for each 14. of you? 14 for, for you wow. and 12 for me. 12 for you, wow. Do you remember when we came and tried to be Rockettes? <laughs> I was there. I you knew were. You, were. <laughs> you can't that erase it. That was a terrible day and We want to commend everybody because it's freezing out here and y'all are warm on the inside so that we're happier. <laughs> what are you guys going to do for us now? Today we're doing a number from our uh, a number in our show called New York at Christmas and it's just a little <gasps> snippet. We, we love this one. one. <laughs> okay. This is the one with the double, double decker bus. Yes. yes. Here we are to perform for you today, and we're okay. so thrilled. We'll take, take it away. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you.
am. I am. T First of all, it makes me fall in love with New York all over again when you guys do that. And that was Christmas. awesome. 90 seasons, man. My mom loved coming to New York and check out the Rockettes. Hard to believe. All right, so we've got one more musical treat for you today. The film Migration, which, by the way, is from NBC's parent company, NBC Universal. That tells the story of a duck family hoping, like many families, to head to Jamaica. Instead, they land here in New York where things go awry. Here's a peek at an adorable musical performance from the animated film Migration. I love you always, forever, near and far, closer, together, everywhere, I will be with you, everything I will do for you. I love you always, forever, near and far, closer, together. Migration rated PG. That looks like a really cute movie, and the soundtrack for Migration looks good, and that hits theaters, the movie, on December 22nd. Well, that's going to do it for today, everybody. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. There's plenty of new music for you to listen to this weekend. Hope that helped. Have a great one. You never know, uh, you, you never show up to somebody's house empty handed. So if you're invited to a holiday party, you must bring something with you. How about dessert? Wait, how did that feel sane coming out of your mouth? Felt good. Do you think well, that's I'm true? Going to learn okay. from the okay. okay, good. Jocelyn <laughs> Delk Adams is the founder of Grand Baby Cakes and mm -hmm. author of the upcoming book, Every Day Grand. Jocelyn, you make the most beautiful food. Thank and it's, you. And it's, and it's, Usually easy too if you pay this attention. Isn't Am I right? Bad at all. You sure? Are you I sure? Because we're really not good great about with this. baking. No, okay. you got this. Okay. You got this. Okay. Believe. Let's do it. So okay. we start with dry. Dry okay. ingredients. Okay. We're just gonna plop it all together. So since we are making gingerbread, we need all the spices. Mm. Like you Tell get us that nice whip. Here. Oh my gosh. Ooh, cinnamon, We've got, cinnamon, of course, ginger. We've ginger. got some cinnamon. Yummy. We've got some cloves. We got some allspice, and then we've got some baking soda. So if you just give that a little mix real quick, get okay. that together. And then we're going to start on already doing great. Don't worry about that. See, sorry, already pretty, doing great here. Thank so you. then we've got some butter that's room temperature. We're going to get that going. And we've got two sugars. We've got some granulated sugar. If you would just, just add them. that in. Yeah, just pour it in. And then you know this process. We're going to cream this, get this all together. And then we're going to get some packed sugar in here. Brown packed? sugar, we want to pack it down. How come? How come? Yeah, so we want to make mm -hmm. sure that we get it all the way in there because in terms of like how much it weighs, that's what you need for this cake. So you're going to pack it in there and you just throw it in there. Oh, it's about weight. Remember somebody said to use a weight. Uh, yeah, it makes for accurate. Exactly. If you like weigh things <laughs> and you're doing great already. Oh you got it. You got it, it in. Right. Next, you know, next okay. time we'll Thank use a spatula, you. it's all good. And then we're going to add some molasses, too, because that's going to really molasses. amp up molasses. this. Molasses. Yes. So not this syrup. Ginger. Molasses. Molasses. And mm -hmm. actually, like, the funny thing about it is if you take, like, granulated sugar and molasses, you actually make brown sugar. Oh, Wait. interesting. Did you is know that? that? Yeah. No. You can use that as a nice Should substitute. Should I pour this in? Yeah. Is so actually, help? we're going to add in our eggs next. Okay. So these are all room temperature, too. You're going to add them in one at a time. Look at you. You have but so much baking knowledge. But why do you? Oh, I'm just on. watching you. Well, girl. you want to make sure that it gets into the it gets batter. All mixed yeah, in. because then sometimes you're going to be like, oh, that didn't even get in now, there. Now, can I ask you, you a know? crazy question? Because I don't have one of these. Yeah. If you don't have one of these, you got a hand mixer? Yeah. Totally. Did I make whipped cream with? Yeah. Okay. Can you I can, pour this in? Yeah, you can pour that in. Look, that this goes heavy? in. Oh, actually, this is buttermilk. Oh, I yes. love that. So don't well. you love buttermilk? It's gonna make now that should cake I go? light and yeah, just start adding. Wait, what about in. this? You forgot this one. Oh yeah, add what some vanilla in. Add no. some vanilla in. We're just gonna just start at it free for all batter here yep, at this good. point. Nice job. This is what happens. This is the magic nice. of TV. You okay. start adding okay. in ingredients and then, and then you get this beautiful batter. Look at that. This is what you want it to look like. Peanut butter. Okay. Once you take your time, it, it almost does yeah. look like peanut butter. Looks like the texture. So you grease and flour your pan. <laughs> yes, grease and flour. Oh, this is what we want to do. Really are a big I, I know. Study. I know. You keep saying that you don't. I but you study. do a great job. Okay, so so we want to make sure this does not stick. You want something like that, right? You okay. don't want like. Oh, there we go. Sorry, yeah. 
off. I can just turn it off. <laughs> like, that is the magic of baking with so Jenna. Put Thank all you. That in. Yeah, we're gonna get all this in, and then once it bakes up, you're Look gonna at get this, this beautiful Look at that. turnout. Look and, at this. Oh, I'm sorry, gorgeous. Babe. Absolutely. Then do you scoop. What's yes. going on okay, here? Okay, so here we're gonna mix that together. You really got well. it. Is that you like a it? caramel sauce? So actually, this is a maple glaze. So it starts with powdered sugar, okay. and then we add in some oh, maple syrup. Look at You're that. Like, look at that. Yes, and then we add in some milk, and then we're going to get it to that consistency. Is that regular milk or condensed? It's just regular milk. And so, so then, it looks thick, but you want it to be thick because if it's not thick enough, if it looks like it's too thin, one, it's going it to just... Won't fr it won't Yeah, you're not going to get that, right? Mm -hmm. you're, it, it's how not going to freeze, right? I mean, you know that? Yeah, it's so, you know, exactly. So you want it to sort of like fall off the sides mm -hmm. and just kind of let gravity take over and mm -hmm. then you get something. Really pretty, Huda. Okay. Yeah, what? Really, really gorgeous. It's almost like <laughs> art class busy. at this point. Like, we're just going Okay, and what's it. this other thing you made right yeah. now? Yeah. Oh, and cheesecake. so this is an eggnog cheesecake. Okay. Or actually a maple cheesecake. I'm all thinking eggnog mm. right now. And mm. it is fantastic. What do you guys mm. think? Oh, my God. It's all yummy. Drop it's one. also good. You really are so talented. Thank you. So you can get so this moist. recipe. Like today.com slash food. It is Superfood Friday, and we are ending the week on a sweet note. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer has two holiday dessert desserts that can go beyond a classic Christmas cookie. Starting with what I'm calling a mashup okay. of a New York style cheesecake mm -hmm. and a holiday spiced eggnog. And I'm calling it an eggnog cheesecake mm. dip. And it's so incredibly simple and rich and indulgent. And it's also a great way to satisfy cravings without excessive calories and sugar and saturated fat. All right, so what's the so, base? So this is light cream cheese, and oh. it's really important that it's very soft. So I set it out on the counter for about an hour. Mm -hmm. Then I put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds. Oh. And here I'm adding in some light sour cream. Mm. Then we have a little bit of brown sugar. Mm -hmm. okay. And if you were to stir all of these things together with a little bit of cinnamon, mm -hmm. you would basically get just a cheesecake dip. But mm. we're going to bring it over the top and make it eggnoggy. So I have my cinnamon. Mm. I have a little bit of nutmeg. Okay. And then just a pinch of cloves, ground okay. cloves. Okay. So let me put this over to the side. And, of course, a little bit of vanilla extract. Sure. Mm. So just a quarter of a teaspoon. You stir this up. And... Because the cream cheese is super soft, you should get a nice silky it's consistency. Creamy. Right. Yeah. yeah, creamy dip. It's That's so, so nice creamy. So We're hungry. We started eating it. It's delish. So the one last thing that I do, I take a little bit of crushed graham cracker, mm -hmm. and I put it right over the oh, top cute. with a dash of cinnamon for some color, mm -hmm. and I serve it with lots of antioxidant-rich yeah. fruit. So I have apples and pears, so uh, strawberries. Kinds of stuff in, it. in there. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Yeah. Very nice. in, by the way, including graham crackers. Uh, really, this is good really good. good. So it's crackers. like you, you get the graham cracker crust. Of the yeah. Cheesecake. Very nice. Mm. Really good. Exactly. You've got the exactly. next one of my favorites, dates. I love dates. Me too. Let me tell you, this has quickly become my absolute new favorite snack. And in fact, last night, Ian said to me, uh, Joy, as I was prepping them, are you going to save any for the morning? Oh, <laughs> nice. They're really good. So I'm calling these chocolate peanut butter mm. covered dates, mm -hmm. but really, they taste exactly like mini Snickers bars. They do. So if you like Snickers, don't they? Oh They're my amazing. Gosh. And four ingredients. So I'm starting with dates, and you can mm -hmm. either buy pitted dates or wow. you These can buy These dates with really the pit good. in. I'm so glad you love Wait, them. This I just can't just get like enough the of them. Snickers. Yeah. Doesn't it? It's a mini Snickers bar. Wow. How do you so get the peanut butter see... in the middle there, though? That's a real thing. Well, hold on. <laughs> so here's what we do. Yeah, so I, I put a little bit oh of peanut God. butter in the inside of each of them, okay. and that's going to give it a nice creamy mm. consistency. Then you pop in two salted roasted peanuts okay. mm. you cover it up mm. and now you know what we're doing we are smothering it mm. with a drizzle of melty dark chocolate mm. just like this so antioxidants and there antioxidants Wait, and now so i'm going to add a dusting of the uh, crushed peanuts right mm. over here. Now, all you need to do is you put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes because you want to firm that chocolate. Let me mm -hmm. grab a, like a and candy one bar. last thing. And Joy, could you well, substitute like almonds or something if you have a peanut oh, that's allergy? Good. So that's a great question. If you have nut allergies in the house, you can substitute 
cashews and cashew mm. butter or almonds and almond butter. Mm. There's all sorts of ways. Look at the inside of this. Can you so see that? So good. That looks yeah. so I might even freeze these. I might even freeze sure. them and use them later. It They're like a candy delicious bar. frozen. It's and really the last good. thing I'm just going to tell you, which uh -huh. is really fun, okay. if you want it instead of the peanuts on top, mm -hmm. yeah. you could put let me let me put this down over here. You could put um crushed candy cane oh. and so it just sort of like dresses it up and it mm -hmm. makes it a little bit more holiday festive or you could do a snow decor and yeah. you can sprinkle some shredded coconut over the top but the cool thing is those dates mm -hmm. they really do taste like caramel i can't believe and they have antioxidants really and fiber you're basically eating a healthy snickers bar it's, i'm it's, so it's happy you guys love it as I much as tell me you, i would actually speak, prefer speak this on, one uh, i'm not even kidding this is uh, really good like a great idea to fill your house with the sweet smell of mm -hmm. fresh baked cinnamon buns on Christmas morning. By the way, yeah. it smells like that right here, right now. It would be amazing. We just have just the person to help make that happen. We met Joanne Kennedy Brown recently when we Donna went down to surprise her at her New Jersey bakery. It's called the Gingered <laughs> Peach. It happened in October, and it was an honor for us. And she's someone who was honored by her community for giving back. Yeah, OK, so her baked goods looked so delicious. Mm. Hold on, I thought, okay, we need we, Joanne Yes, we here. wanted you there. We, we want to learn us. how to make these famous cinnamon ro rolls, and you say that anybody can do this. So easy. Anyone can do this. How okay. has this whole experience been for you? It's been crazy. <laughs> it's been crazy. It's been um, such a beautiful, wonderful surprise, wow. and I think that um, it really meant a lot for the community, and, I mean, the grants. Like, they... they it was By the way, you're, okay, you're adored and loved um, for everything you do. But will you will you show us how to make these? <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. So we start with wet? No. Okay. Fry. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we're off to a good start. Okay, great start. So yeah. we're not great at baking. What we're going to do is we're going to make brioche, which most people are afraid of, but they make amazing cinnamon buns, and it's incredibly easy. Okay. What we're starting off with is we've got some eggs mm -hmm. with um, some vanilla extract. We've got a, our flour, our sugar, mm -hmm. our salt in the bowl, and then we have our yeast here. Yeast. We so. So, yes. So that was what was confusing me. It looked both wet and dry. Yes. So here our yeast is bloomed and it's mm -hmm. developed and ready to go. So for all the bakers at home, um, everybody knows what you, the yeast package you get in the yeah. supermarket. That's active dry yeast. Um, this recipe calls for instance, they are interchangeable. So don't stress. One okay. to one. Use either okay. one. Okay. And also if you're old school, you could may have cake yeast in your home. Mm -hmm. And once again, one to one interchangeable. Okay, okay great. So what, tell me what, so what we got here is, yep. So we have our yeast in our bowl. We're going to add our eggs and our vanilla. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay. And we're just going to give that a little bit of a turn. So you'll notice we have our hook attachment on because we're working. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Good job. Fantastic. That's perfect. That okay. brings it together. Okay. Then we're going to add in all of our dry ingredients okay, so right into the bowl. Okay. So we're adding okay, all that. Pretend it's all we done. add all this too? All goes in? <laughs> All this right. So no, this is going to wait. So okay. brioche is a two-step process. Okay. What we're going to do is we, you're going to mix this okay. until it gets nice and silky. 
Let's keep moving on. And over it comes here. together, Just and then we're going to introduce the butter. the butter after. Okay. So this when is you what get you this. got. This is what you got. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a little bit of flour on your countertop, and you want to roll this out to an 18 by 14, mm -hmm. okay. approximately. So I'm okay. just going to bring this over a little bit with my rolling pin. Mm -hmm. And then this is the fun part. Oh, so if there's, if there's kids at home, get yeah. them involved. Okay. It's so fun. You take your butter, and we're just going to slather it oh, all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? If more, you're more, impatient more. like me, yeah, you can just, just, dump, it just it dump it on there, and you're going to okay. spread it all over the place. And then we have cinnamon sugar right and there. And then we've got cinnamon oh, sugar, I love cinnamon which sugar. you can make it oh. rain. Yes. Make it rain. Yes. Just make it rain, cinnamon sugar Merry all Christmas over. Uh, if you want to substitute nuts, throw some nuts in here. You want to throw some cardamom, throw some cardamom. Whatever you want to do. Like. We want cinnamon sugar. So now how do you sugar. make it turn into rolls? So here's how you turn into rolls. You're going to start and flip over an edge just like that. And then just keep doing that. And you're going to pinch, pinch, pinch all the way across. Pinch, pinch, pinch. And because it's brioche, it's going to hold its shape. You see? Yeah, it really yeah. does. It's yeah. just going to say. So say. now you so want now help? Yeah, so yes. Yeah, we're going to give the money. Get in there, Hoda. Roll it. I'm watching your video. She's you like, I'm going to watch. I'm Am watching. I going so fast? You, no, you're doing great. Good. So we're going to so, roll it, roll so it. So once it gets all the way up. Yep. Mm. Once we have so it all we're the gonna, way up. We just have a couple of seconds. So we sure. slice it and put it in in here. Yep. This is, how long do you bake it? So this is going to bake, so it's going to rise for about an hour and a half. You want it to double in volume. Okay. And then usually you're just going to kind of scoop your icing oh, on. Look, look, look. Right? Oh, and then love just it. so good. Yeah, and love just it. give that a little bit of a I'm spread. I'm so sorry. I've been wanting to do this. That's okay. Yeah. Treat yourself. Mm. What's right here? Oh, 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 oh. Joanne, how? Hold on. I wish I knew. Oh. Mm. But you just spread on your icing. <laughs> it's Christmas. Mm-hmm. Make it like Christmas. No. Mm-hmm. By the way. We're so happy. If anything's chemical, it's eating those. <laughs> it really so is. Joanne, you're Thank the best. You. best. Mm. For this recipe, y'all, make mm. it tomorrow. Go to today.com slash food. Mm. <laughs> Christina Tozzi is here to show us how to put a fun twist on some traditional holiday desserts. Christina is one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm the founder of the popular bakery, milk bar that everybody loves. Christina, what are you showing us? Oh my gosh, hey. Ina, stop it, you're the best. <laughs> it's an honor to be here oh, with you. Okay, so, much so fun. we make all these different fun layer cakes at Milk Bar, and one of, the, one of my favorite things that we do at our Milk Bar bakeries, our flagships in New York and LA, is we do something called build a cake. And so I thought today, here's your friend, yeah. um, <laughs> that we would make the Ina Garden holiday special. Oh, oh and you're making an Ina cake? <laughs> yes, right? Like, why not? And should, now, Christina has sent you a layer cake yeah, before. Did. I mean, she did, and it was amazing. Okay. It was outrageous. So, I know you love vanilla. Vanilla is vanilla. like your flavor yeah. story. And I think when you're making desserts, you have to bake for the person that you're baking for. You yeah. don't just bake what you want. You have to really speak to someone's soul. And that's when, when it's you're a baking. real gift. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's it. So, okay. we're starting with vanilla cake, yeah. a nice vanilla sponge cake. And then, you know, one of my favorite pro tips when making a layer cake is to soak the cake you first. You taught me that, and I always do it now. It's incredible. I was making a Boston cream pie, and Christina told me that, that, that if you do it, an orange soak with it. Yes. And we did orange and a little Grand Marnier. Oh. It tasted oh. so much better. It keeps it moist. It gives it lots of flavor. How do you know and how much so to, to soak it? Well, so there is such thing as too much or too little. One okay. cake soak will bring a cake back to life if you've overbaked it maybe a little bit mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. We you've never under that. No, 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 never. never. <laughs> under bake it a little less soak, but I like to say when you see a little bit of that milk come out the okay. bottom, that's when uh. you know you're really at max. And okay. interesting. You do a milk soak. So it's a, great. this is a milk soak, but this is a vanilla mint milk soak. Oh. I wanted to. I knew it's I your smelled holiday something good. special, yes. right? Yeah. So taking vanilla flavors, building off of it, you can flavor your cake soak with anything: orange, Grand Marnier. This is a little vanilla extract, a little mint soak. Mm, wow! And then I like to play with you know flavors and texture. So our first layer is. No, I need to tell everybody. I'm sure there's nobody that doesn't know milk bar, but the cakes are layered, and you can see the edge. Oh, yes. which is really important. It's an invitation in. It is. Right? It, it really is. is. Instead of seeing a cake that's all covered with chocolate, you can see all the layers. It makes it that much more appealing and Doesn't enticing it really yes it's so, irresistible uh, you're you too i can't with you <laughs> is this so frosting this is cream? a liquid cheesecake so it's mm. basically cheesecake that's a little bit underbaked purposefully no. incredible oh my god no. i'll skip that one. Then, <laughs> then some pretzel crumbs so oh. a little salty really br a little salt really brings out and the sweet we, right we just Get in there. you know i like these okay. all of your um desserts really have sort of old-fashioned um precedents there are mm -hmm. things that you remember like cereal milk mm. 
Mm. Yes. I love the idea of cereal oh. milk. It's the cereal that's left in the bottom oh, of the yeah, bowl so good. after you've eaten the cornflakes. So what's mean, this next layer? So this next layer is a mint chip layer. Okay. So really playing with vanilla notes, a little salty sweet note, and then a mint chip because it is the holidays and mint but is it for a frosting me, like a butter? Yeah, in it? it's okay. a frosting exactly. It's it's butter based. We take some chocolate um, mm. shards and fold it into the frosting. Mm -hmm. I do this layer once again to build this cake up to create this masterpiece over here. Okay. Oh, so this is what it looks like when it's built up. This is Look what it looks that. like when it's built up. Oh, we take the cake see, ring off. I love fabulous. that. You see so you all the see layers, all the layers. Yeah. and then you can decorate it however you want. I've decorated, I'm a really big flavor story person, so <laughs> you're, the Ina Garden Holiday special flavor story is mint and vanilla mm. with a little that salty sweet me. moments. Mint is the flavor story at Milk Bar right now. We have this incredible chocolate mint chip cake and chocolate mint chip truffles that are like based off of mintiness, but like that ice cream that you mm. can't stop eating. Yes. Like, exactly. Peppermint bark snaps and then sugar, sugar cookies, which you can get in the aisles of the grocery store. But this is like our season to bake. Or just eat the pretzels, eat the pretzels right? I know. I mean, that's it, my friends. So you decorate the, oh, how fabulous. So yeah, yes. then we decorate the top of the cake. Mm -hmm. yeah. Depending on what the flavor story is, you can always that's take fun. a little bit of those peppermint bits to you, bring some red and white in. I'll I'll decorate. Decorate. We need to decorate. As Savannah's like, give me another pretzel, <laughs> I know. I'll take I know, I'm just eating the... But this is also such a fun way to engage people in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, it's actually great, isn't it? You have everything lined the up. The kids it's could help out, I too. mean, when people come over to your house, are they like, I know, how can I help in the kitchen? This is the task you put them on. It's I fabulous. You get your cake from Milk Bar. You say, get in there, start decorating. I love it. Christina Tosi from Milk Bar, thank you so much. back with Today Food and we're joined this morning by Chef Brian Lewis whose restaurant The Cottage has been getting rave reviews. Full disclosure, it's one of my favorite restaurants Thank in town. You. My wife and Lindsay and I, we love this place. He's here with a fun and delicious dessert that the whole family can get involved in. And this is a, a special one because this one belonged to your mom, right? It sure does. So my mom, MJ. Hi mom. Aww. She um, is absolutely awesome and this is her her go-to holiday. Every, every December we Enjoy these cookies since we were since we were kids, oh. and now my boys, Jude and Jacks, my twin boys, they make it with me. I love it. And um, to varying degrees of success, I'm going to pulse, get right into this, and show you how we What'd do it. What'd you just throw in there? All right, so we have hazelnuts and almonds, which you want to um, use blanched ones. Toast them for about 10, 15 minutes at 350 degrees okay. until they're just lightly brown. Let them cool. Put them in uh, with a little bit of flour. Right. You want to blend that 
just so it's nice and nice and fine. Okay. And the flour keeps it from getting too oily and nice and separate. And then we're going to have all these other delicious ingredients. So you have this almond hazelnut flour, if you will. Okay. All right. And then we're going to take, you want to get in here? Sure. Get some flour. Just regular all-purpose flour? All-purpose flour. Okay. Sugar. A little sugar. One egg? Uh, not yet on the eggs. Oh, yes, not sir. yet on the eggs. <laughs> Hold on. You're going to take horses. your spices. You've got Hold cinnamon, horses. baking powder, salt, a little bit of nutmeg. A little nutmeg. All right. Put you to work here. Let's see. A little, little lemon. A second. lemon zest. Get a little bit of lemon zest. Lemon zest. So it's a really fragrant. What's beautiful. the word over there, Yummy. boys and girls? So Are you getting in on it? Delicious. On it. We stole one of the cookies too. So the nice, yeah. the nice part yeah. about this is it works really beautifully as a tart, which we serve in the restaurants, or as cookies, which we of course have at home. Mm -hmm. You want to get in there. Okay. With, blend that just a little yeah. bit. All, right. All set, go, and yeah. we're good. Let's. Right. And that's a little cold butter there. Cold butter. I want to make sure we get it all in. So you got it. Moving on down. So here we're gonna have our. Raspberry jam, you can either make your own or, yeah. of course, um, any store bought sure. really great quality. You get your sugar. A little raspberry bit of your jam's easy to make, right? Super easy. Raspberries, sugar, a little bit of lemon juice Frozen. at the end. Oh. Cook it down for about 20 minutes, jam, finish yeah. it with lemon juice, let it chill, and we'll go over to the tart. Dylan Dryer's wheels are spinning mm -hmm. right now. She's like, yeah. I big I'm, raspberry jam well, today. No. <laughs> I make it's super raspberry easy. tarts, but they're not this good. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And then we want to just roll out our dough. Mm -hmm. It's very important that when you take the dough, you want to refrigerate it for a good 20, 30 minutes to make sure it's not too soft. Okay. Because it's a really beautiful, pliable dough. And um, the nice thing is we make with the kids, with Jude and Jacks, we just make a bunch of cookies or tarts, yeah. and you can really just freeform it. It's not a, it's a very forgiving dough, mm -hmm. so it's really nice that way. Okay. So this we're going to roll great. it out, and then this over is, here. You're right. This would be great to do with the kids. This it's perfect. Because it's, it's delicious, and, of course, they love to eat it alone. You know, raw. Of course. Who doesn't? So we've rolled right. that out. We're going to get over here. So you're going to get your tart mm -hmm. just to about this size, put it in the refrigerator, yep. and then this is also, if you don't want to do a tart, there's your cookies. Well, cookies. Oh. Oh. Same right there. Smart. base. And, and, we, and we do little, you want to cut them out like little circles like that, and then you can take little hearts. And the they're, yeah. they're almost too pretty to eat. I was going to say. <laughs> very pretty. Almost too it. pretty. My boys <laughs> like, to, might like to make little, they're football fanatics, so they Brian. like to oh, take well, little football. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, cute. thank you so much. We just made the Christmas dinner. Now it's time for dessert. Please welcome our sweet all-star team of Adam Richman, Jeffrey Zakarian, and Jocelyn Delk Adams. We're oh, making wow. It's time for desserts. Adam, are you starting us off with desserts? I am indeed. And oh, it's very okay. fitting that the lovely Jocelyn Good is luck. here because she inspired oh, this Lord. recipe okay. with, with our Thanksgiving segment. So this is um, partially inspired by something she mentioned, that if you make brownies or even gingerbread cookies and they fall apart, you can repurpose them. So you can get a store-bought oh, wow. brownie or blondie mix, add the components that make gingerbread gingerbread, add cinnamon, add nutmeg, add ginger um, to the brownies. You can put the bro broken brownies, if they come into out a little a bit messed up, yeah. into a oh. trifle. <gasps> Vanilla pudding mix, but you oh. make it with eggnog. So oh, as, stop as a Jew, it. these are, are the flavors I, I look to. <laughs> and uh, then you just can finish it off with a little bit of crumbled gingerbread. So it's a great one. And I have That's to say, because I don't get a right chance here. to cook with you again, I am going to miss you so much oh. when you go. And I love you so much. Oh.
Aww. and I think you're the best. So Thank this is a great you, holiday yeah. gift for me to be Thank able to come Thank you, sweetheart. Jeffrey, so Jeffrey. That's so sad, but I, I have to visit you because I'm yes. in New York still. He, yes, you are. That's right. Yeah. Speaking of you, I'm going to use some of your wine, and I'm going to mull some fruit. So this is great he because... the way to my heart. Everything, <laughs> this is all from your pantry. This is all leftover. So if you have dates, if you have uh, apricots, cranberries... This Throw is made with there. fresh plums. Right. You can use pears. And you can smell this. And you put the mulling spices, some cinnamon, some star anise. Mm, and I yeah. think Christmas and holidays are about the smells and music. It's so all the senses. holiday music and smelling. And you can cook anything, and you're happy. My CDs and my and exactly. my wine. It's perfect. So we're going to take some of this fruit. We're just going to cook this my fruit. idea of heaven. We're going to cook this fruit with some sugar. Cook it down. Look how beautiful that is. That what are you doing And we're going to take a store-bought oh, cheesecake. I know. Which is a pie. There's I nothing that wrong with you, that. Jeffrey, you're not a snob. Top. I'm not a snob. And you can look just use that. this and decorate. Look at that. Or ice cream. Look and how delicious that looks. And you can say, I made it. And then you mean it. Isn't that beautiful? That's so Wow, pretty. gorgeous. Me to you. That's awesome. Uh, hey, Jeffrey, is that is a cheesecake a, a pie or a cake? We're just having a quick I debate. Know, it's a cake to me. It's a it's cake. A cake. It's made with the sour cream And it's instead, got the and crust, it's... and it looks like a pie. It looks like a key no, lime pie. pie. I, so I think it's a cake. the key lime pie looks just like that. Okay, bye bye <laughs> We'll mull that wondering. over as you're mulling will that. Mull <laughs> you will mull it. Hi! Jocelyn, what you got, honey? We're making chocolate bowls. Okay, so this is so fun to get the kids involved because okay. I feel like around Christmas you need to get them in the kitchen and uh -huh. make those family sure. memories. So all you have to do here is we're going to take these water balloons. In fact, I would really love to see if Adam and Jeffrey could, like, blow these up. Let's see what you do. Okay, let's see what luck. you do here. Good Come on now. Come on. Come, on. Come, on. Let's one. Come on, let's see what you're doing. So this is going to be good. Okay, let's, uh, uh, all right. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, that's okay, pretty no, good. We're going to lay off the cigar. Once you have them blown up, you're gonna stick this right. You're gonna stick this right in, in some melted chocolate. But it can't oh my god! Too warm, right? Yeah, no. You just want it to kind of just set up, and you're gonna put this right into your refrigerator for about ten minutes. And kind of go happens? around the corners of it, this and then we're gonna have a little banana. Fun. We're gonna pop Look, these. Gonna happen, oh my gosh! Oh, 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 oh you're, see, you're so good at this already. Do you see how easy this is? It. I okay, like we're to gonna do pop this. Ooh. You want to do the honors? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ready, hold it. Okay, okay. Here you go. Okay. Hold on, you want to pop the purple it? One, I'll okay. Going. okay, one, two, three. That was just going okay. viral. That was you? like, this is, I know, because it's like, right uh, right it's like jumping into a pool. I just like, I know. And then it comes right it out. What's and then yours is like, I know your balloon just did heck? not want to play along. So, but this one is really nice. Thank you. You're not welcome. Right. It's my pleasure. By the way, that's an awesome, that's a little bowl you just yeah, created. I know, I made a bowl. And you just put candy. You For can put anything recipes, in there. these go to today.com slash food. Welcome to the boost, and I cannot wait to start your day off with some holiday cheer. So, let us get started with a heartwarming story. Imagine this meeting your biggest hero just when you need it most. For 43 years, Make a Wish has been granting wishes to children with critical illnesses all around the world, more than 900,000 and counting. Jacob Soboroff visited Universal Studios for one of the very latest Dwayne The Rock Johnson with a very special surprise for a remarkable group of kids. Take a look. On a sparkling 78 degree December day in Southern California, a group of very special kids and their families began a journey to fulfill a wish. 21 very deserving wish children are getting their wishes granted to meet Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and they are over the moon excited. I'm his biggest fan. Best eyebrow. <laughs> All of it happened at Universal Studios Hollywood. I want to flip an arm wrestle. <laughs> Enter The Rock. Mr. Johnson. How are you, sir? Nice to see you. Good to see you. So today is one of the biggest days in Make-A-Wish history. It's unbelievable. We're in the back lot here at Universal, and they're going to be on a tram coming up. They have no idea I'm going to be here. He got back in the car. Here comes the tram. We got a pretty cool looking pickup truck over there. Yeah! How are you doing? I'm so good. It's so good to see you. Should I get on this tram with you guys? Yeah! All right, let's do it. For these kids and families, it was a dream come true. We knew we were going to meet them here, but I didn't know he was going to do it. Like this. The Rock giving the Universal Backlot Tour. Toss Kevin Hart in the water. Yes! <laughs> but then the shark would still be hungry. Yeah, that's true. Pleasing his fans is in The Rock's DNA. And he took time throughout the day to do just that. Uh, what's the best part about the tour so far? Yeah. Thank you. I was just fishing for that compliment. <laughs> 
would make a wish, and these kids are in his heart, and have been since his own dad, Rocky, granted the first New Jersey wish 40 years ago. This little boy named Bobby, I'll never forget it, his last wish was to meet my dad. It puts things in, into perspective for you right away. So for the last 25 years, he's followed in those footsteps, making wishes come true. You could pick any charity in any part of the country, any part of the world, really, to work with, but you have chosen this charity. Why? These are kids, and man, the cards that they are dealt. They didn't ask for it, but they're playing these hands as best they can. You know, I'm, I, I get emotional. These kids are so strong. On a day where he was only supposed to spend an hour with these families, he spent five providing entertainment, hugs, and granting Adelaide's special wish. Yeah. You're gonna get your butt. It was so clear that giving back is a genuine part of his character. I felt compelled to ask him about swirling presidential rumors. Today you get to help you know, dozens of children. You sure you don't want to be president of the United States? <laughs> um, here's what I could tell you with 100% certainty yeah. and surety is that I believe in uh, working hard, controlling the controllables, kicking ass, and always give back. That's what I could tell you. So it's not a no. Uh, you see what? It's not a no. <laughs> you see what I it's did? It's not a no. <laughs> and he's starting with these kids. What I love about days like today is it's a way for us to show people that there's a lot of good out there, man. So I like that. Speaking of epic surprises, I got to visit PSMS 124, a school in Queens where students are so very passionate about giving back. And that's why we decided it was time to do a little something for them. Check it out. Be the change! Be the change! The students at PS MS124 are committed to being change makers. Hi, we're here for the holiday toy drive. Do you guys have any toys? Yeah! The K through 8 school in Queens, New York has more than 1,000 students who all share one goal to give back to others as much as they can. Be the change is their school motto, and they're living up to it by helping a new cause each month. A sock drive in October, a food drive in November, and now they are Santa's elves collecting toys for their holiday toy drive. Let's go. I visited the school to meet up with these incredible students. When I walked in your school, I could feel the vibe. There's something different about your school. Why do you want to be the change? If something is wrong and nobody changes it, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. Mm. But if somebody changes that, it can spread kindness. Kindness is important, isn't it? A small act of kindness can change someone's life entirely. I know that there are those struggling, and if they're struggling, it's a struggle that we struggle together. We know that your generous hearts aren't just around this time of the year, but why is it extra important to give at this time of the year? We're all humans. We should be helping each other out to be happy. We're collecting toys and giving them to the people who are less fortunate. We're making their lives a bit easier and like less stressful, which makes all of us really proud of this whole school. We're doing the toy drive at the school. At PSMS 124, the teachers give too. It's a Title I school and many of its families are in need. Amy Workola and Erica Denuso spearhead faculty-wide efforts to help the kids they love. If we can give them any semblance of peace, love, care, I will always do that work. Staff members anonymously buy a winter coat and a holiday present for every student in need and host a big Thanksgiving feast for all the families in temporary housing. We were able to have the entire staff there helping. The whole community just came together. Everything that is purchased is purchased by our staff with their own money. You could say the spirit of giving echoes through the hallways here. So you collected how many toys today? Uh, I'd say about 50-ish. Let's go check it out, come on. But little do they know, it's about to kick into high gear. That does not look like 50. Wow. Oh come on in. Is this more than 50 toys? Yes. yes. Macy's and Toys R Us donated 1,000 toys to your toy drive. We actually have another surprise in an effort to help you guys help the students. Macy's is giving you 
a $3,000 gift certificate. For you guys. Yes. Come on, do you love your teachers? Yes. yes. Meanwhile, just down the hall, hundreds of students gathered for our biggest surprise yet. What do your shirts say? Yeah. By the way, this school is the change. I am so proud of you because you guys are focused on giving things away. But you know what? It is time for someone to give back to you. Count down with me. Three. Macy's and Toys R Us is going to give every single student in here a Christmas present. celebration of the season of giving with children who live it every single day. Happy holidays! When we come back, a mother-daughter duo making history. We'll explain after the break. the boost this next story is about a history making mother and daughter the only simultaneous sitting judges in Pennsylvania in fact they are in neighboring towns no less their story is one of courage and of believing in yourself let's take a look at how they got here Deborah Lukens and her daughter Jody Griffiths say they never dreamt of becoming attorneys let alone judges like so many their paths were not always perfectly planned out or what they expected I found myself <laughs> single at 34 years old, and when I went to tell my parents, my father's first thing out of his mouth was, good, now you'll go to law school. I had two children at home, I had no money and no job, and I started law school at 37 years old. Deborah took a leap. She enrolled at Widener University School of Law in Delaware. She says she couldn't have done it without friends and family. I had over an hour drive each way, and if I was running late, they would just grab my kids and take them into their house. So I never had to worry about that. It does take a village, I'm not gonna lie. Deborah graduated from law school in 1991. She started out in the district attorney's office. Two years later, she ran for the magisterial district judge seat in White Marsh Township in Pennsylvania, and she won. It was the beginning of three decades on the bench. Years later, her daughter Jody wasn't sure of her own path. I was undecided, so it was between teaching and law. My college roommate was taking the LSAT, so I was like, okay, I'll sign up, I'll take the LSAT. Jody ended up attending the same law school as her mom. I remember going to law school and calling her. I mean, I was 11 when she graduated law school. So I was like, how did you do this with two 
young kids at home raising us and putting us to sleep and then studying for law school exams. Jody's graduation was a special moment for her and her mom. She handed me my diploma when I graduated law school and we were the only mother-daughter at that time, which was very significant. You know, there was a lot of father-son, there was a couple father-daughters, but we were the only mother-daughter pair. Jody went to work as a public defender. Two years ago, she and her mom would hit another historic first when Deborah swore Jody in as the magisterial district judge in the township right next to hers. And now, as Deborah faces retirement, they reflect on how far they've come. It's not easy. <laughs> so when I meet people, young women that say they can't do it, I say, yes, you yes, can. can. I did it, and this is how you do it. Share the experience, show other people how to get past it. And I did, I was lucky enough. Lucky and determined and hardworking, Judge Deborah Lukens is here along with her daughter, Judge Jody Griffiths. Your honors, thank you for being here so much. <laughs> thank you for having us. What's it like? We just showed you, this is your life. What is yeah. it like for you to, to be in this moment and, and to share it with your daughter this way? This is one of the most exciting things in the world for both of us, and I think they've told you as I swore Jody in that day, I said, okay, we need the Today Show. That, <laughs> that to me was making it. So you have made it for us. Oh my us. gosh, well you guys made it. I mean, Jody, first of all, your mom officiated your wedding. Yes. And she was such an example for you. Absolutely. Did you really, until you went to law school, did you fully grasp what she had done as a mother of two little kids, divorced, deciding, you know what, I'm gonna go to law school and pull this off. I knew she was different, you know? I knew that she was strong and that she raised us and she was everything to us. But like I said, I mean, when I was in law school and sitting there studying and doing exams, it was like, how did you do this with two little kids at home? I mean, I'm in a bubble just doing law school all on my own. And she had to take care of us, put us to sleep, and then focus on it. I used to call her all the time. I'm like, oh my God, how did you do this? Well, how did you do it? I was angry. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, just like, it was a tough divorce and it was getting back on your feet. And, uh, you know, re molding myself with two little girls. In your, uh, in your 30s, it's not easy yeah. to do. Your father seems incredible. Like he just said, well, we're going to pick ourselves up and we're going to law school. Oh, there was no question. That was all it was. I said, I have no money. He says, it doesn't matter. And uh, he actually enrolled me in a course to take the LSATs wow. under my maiden name, paid for it, and told me afterwards when he picked me up and drove me. And he drove me every single night of that class wow. for three months. Well, that's when you say it takes a village, it does take it a village. Now to the incredible story of a young patient with big dreams and his doctor who has her own special connection with the hospital. Harry Smith shares their story. Ayan Gupta is good at many things, be it Rubik's Cube or Bottle Toss. He has his own YouTube channel. Italy. Italy. For him, conquering challenges has been child's play until... I couldn't believe it. I continued to say it was a lab error. Um, a lab error. He was completely normal with no complaints, no symptoms. No symptoms of acute lymphatic leukemia. Ion's parents are doctors, fortunate to live in Memphis. We knew St. Jude was the perfect place to be for the cancer that my child had. Treating childhood cancer is not kid stuff. The regimens are difficult. What parts of it did you not like? I didn't like taking the liquid medicines. So then I learned how to take pills. How much of a difference did it make to learn how to take a pill? It was much better. They eased his mind by talking to him through every single step of treatment or procedure. Ayan's doctor, it turns out, has a little extra in her resume. My name is Maggie Cupid Link. I take care of kids with cancer. Dr. Cupid Link herself was a patient at St. Jude when she was in college. What was the diagnosis? Ewing sarcoma, which is one of the types of childhood bone cancer. I was 19. She was hospitalized for a year. My treatment included lots of chemotherapy, as well as a really big surgery where they remove the bones and the tumor and replace it with metal. So this is my scar from the surgery. 19-year-old Maggie was not a model patient. I wish I could say that I was just, had a great attitude the whole time, but I did not. Until she took a good look at her fellow patients. They're so resilient and genuine and not afraid of death the way that grown-ups are. And then I knew if I live, then this is the kind of doctor I'll be for them. What does it mean to you to have a physician who's 
quite responsible for your son's health, mm -hmm. who was actually a patient here once herself. It means a lot to us. I think somewhere in the back of my head, I thought um, this child may not be able to do what he needed to do. Um, but when Dr. Maggie walked in and she told me that she herself was a patient and that she overcame all of this and is doing what she's doing now, I became hopeful <laughs> that he's allowed to dream and he's allowed to be whatever he wants to be. Yep. There's nothing better than the feeling of knowing that I'm helping these kids in a way that is unique because I understand something that they're going through. All of which makes for a really good story, but there's more. When I was just 21, I went into menopause. Dr. Cupid Link and her husband planned on adopting, but... So they woke up, the ovaries, which there's actually not medical literature on. Yes, Dr. Cupid Link got pregnant. It definitely is one of those moments where you realize that you're not in control of what happens to you. Healing is not only about science. St. Jude brought us hope and faith, which was very crucial to get through this process. We have definitely evolved in a way we never thought we would. Isn't that something? It totally is. Coming up, the small town spirit that helped save a supermarket that offers so much more than just groceries. That's after the break. on the booth spotlighting a very special supermarket. After the owner of the grocery store in Sheffield, Illinois decided to retire, this small town got creative to keep the vital community resource open. Maggie Vespa has the story. Hours west of Chicago and a world away from urban life sits a town so small it runs without stoplights. In Sheffield, Illinois, the population is measured by the hundreds and the checkout clerk knows your name. It's been like that since Cliff Winger opened the town's only grocery store in 1940. He enjoyed the whole small town life. Royal Supermart fed Sheffield for decades. Winger's son, John, took over in the 80s. Then, a few years ago, life changed. You were retiring. That's, that's correct, but I don't want to leave the town without a grocery store. Fear spreads fast in small towns. Driving distances to pick up milk, it makes it more challenging. Well, a lot of times you can eat just an onion. I don't want to have to drive a half an hour to go get an onion. I'm raising little kids here. Enter Elizabeth Pratt, a nurse who runs a nonprofit focused on health. A lot of people are left convenience store shopping for their main source of food, and that just it doesn't sit right with me. 
she offered to buy the store if she could raise the funds. Was that like music to your ears? Oh, yes. If fear spreads fast, generosity goes at warp speed. Personal and corporate donations topped half a million dollars. 43, 43. Pratt renovated, making Royal Supermart energy efficient, adding self-checkout, and cementing local access to fresh meat and produce. How proud is everyone working here? Oh, I think they're all very proud. Proud knowing this tiny town can feed itself. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and some young photographers are strengthening their skills thanks to a unique experience offered by National Geographic. It takes aspiring photographers from all over the world and teaches them to capture a moment in time. Peter Alexander shares the story of this empowering program. They are breathtaking and bold. Through their eyes, National Geographic photographers for years have given us a unique glimpse around the globe, revealing sights we'd otherwise never see. And for the past two decades, they've handed over their cameras to young people in some of the farthest corners of the world. Botswana. Myanmar. South Sudan. New, New Zealand. Zealand. Mississippi. These aspiring photographers learn how to get comfortable behind the camera, building skills and confidence, and developing deep connections with one another at what's called PhotoCamp. PhotoCamp is a photography mentoring program for young people around the world. What it's an unbelievable experience for these students. Oh yeah, and for me. Veteran photographer Kirsten Elsner is PhotoCamp's founder. What does the world look like through a young person's eyes? It often looks very fresh and unjaded because sometimes they've never picked up a camera before. There's like a unique so, authenticity. Yeah, we show them the rules of composition, but we always say, go ahead and break them. Sometimes I'm very socially anxious and the photographs have helped me break through that barrier and like talk with people. Ankita Das was first invited to photo camp in her hometown of Calcutta, India, where she took this candid shot of a rickshaw puller taking a well-earned break. What do you hope to express with your photos? I really just want to make meaningful connections. She's among the more than 3,000 photo campers Nat Geo has hosted across 35 countries. Their image is now featured in a new book celebrating photo camp's 20th anniversary. Which visually, which one works? During each week-long program, students are connected with world-class Nat Geo photographers like Lynn Johnson. You can see the transformation. You can feel the fear in the beginning and the reticence and then you can feel that start to loosen. One tradition, each student writes a note and tucks it into their camera bag to be read by another camper in another country. To start this note off, my name is Zion. You will have such a great few days. Scratch that. You will have a blast at photo camp. Just gotta have trust and text me on Instagram. <laughs> They're like pen pals around the world. Around the world and here at home. They've taken a picture of you. <laughs> These sessions have helped Pox Young find his voice, empowering him to capture photos of his people on the Nez Pierce Reservation in Idaho and the endangered wildlife that shares that land. I imagine your family must be so incredibly proud of you having this experience. They're like, just go for it. Speak with your heart, speak with your tamina. That's what we call it. Tamina, or mm -hmm. your heart? Yeah. When people on the reservation look at your work, mm -hmm. what do you hope they say? That that's me, you know. Their authentic yeah, selves. They're, yeah, their authentic selves. All while building a bond with one another and offering a picture of the future. Coming up, we've got the latest viral video to boost your day. Stay with us.
Welcome back to The Boost. We got one more video. It'll leave you with a smile. Take a look. Sunday, Sunday. Mama, she's from Sunday. Then Sunday, Sunday. Oh, it's so good. Chanel joins our favorite morning boost of the week, maybe the year. Yes. Two-year-old Justin Gunter Jr. and his obsession with Al's famous line. Okay, after we showed, showed this video, we shared it. We knew that we had to get Al and Justin together. Guess what? It's all happening. Justin's here along with his dad, Justin Sr., and his mom, Shelly. Shelly, by the way, part of our NBC family. We're so happy that you're here with us in South Florida. You're an anchor on NBC6, just down from Miami. But guys, we're just missing one person, Justin. Who are we missing? Who's oh, here? We're missing we're somebody. Missing somebody. You come to see me. Sunday, 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 <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> Sunday. Hello, <laughs> Justin. Give him a hug. How are you, buddy? Give him a hug. Oh, oh, my little Sunday, Sunday yes. guy. That's it for today. We hope we're able to start your day off with a little positivity. And guess what? We will see you next time with more of the boost right here on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names. Only on Today. See, it worth coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's Today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The miracle. The miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on Today. Hello and welcome to Start Today. Now, as we look back on this year, our community members have a lot to be proud of. They've tackled every monthly challenge so far, and we got one more to close out 2023. If you want to join in on the fun, just scan the QR code to subscribe to our newsletter and connect with over a half million folks on a mission to get healthy. On this episode, we're going to share easy hacks to help you simplify your daily routine, tips to eat healthy, and let's not forget the workouts, including some dance moves to help ring in the new year. This is Start Today. Let's kick things off with our fitness leader, Stephanie Mansoor, and this month's aerobic challenge. So we love a good throw, uh, like a little flashback Friday here, Steph. Yeah, and we're right. talking aerobics, but this is something you did in college. Actually, it is. So, you know, I grew up playing oh. sports, and when I got to college, I stopped this. playing sports. I had to find something fun that would get me moving in college. Like many people, I gained the freshman 15, but then 20, 25 pounds was really unhappy with how I looked, how I felt. So I started dancing around in my dorm room. Room, and then I started an aerobics TV Wait, show at University of Michigan. Oh, look this at is, that. So you've been doing yeah. this for a minute. Wow, look at those moves. <laughs> hey, now. Back it Almost up. Almost 20 years ago there, oh guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we joke, but aerobics and these little movements, they're fun to do, and it's a great workout. Yeah, absolutely. And especially mm -hmm. now, people are busy. They're stressed. Mm -hmm. Look at your workout as a fun time okay. where you can entertain yourself. Just dance around to the beat, and you'll burn calories and feel better mentally, too. Oh, What's our that. first move? Yeah, let's, and, and let's bring you in here, too, because Jessica, she is um, Jessica. Miller, she's in Connecticut. All three of her kids are adults now, out of the house. And you have said you found community with the Start Today team. I did, I did. And I'm so glad that she changes up the workout. Steph changes up the workout each month, and I'm excited and wanted to ask a question about how to get aerobic activity into the workout. Yeah, you know, this is something everyone can do at home here. We're gonna start with a simple march in place, okay? So pumping those arms, marching to the Ready? beat, and then, oops. Am I losing no, something? I'm, I'm, I know. Losing, I'm losing jewels. <laughs> Yikes. I can't even pick that up. <laughs> All right, so we're marching here, and then what we're going to do is a side step. So we're going to do side step, side step, side step. Yes, I know. Ideally, you'd want to wear those tennis shoes, but this little basic movement, you can do barefoot. Yeah. <laughs> On 
the carpeting. It's fine because you won't slip. Just be careful here. Okay, okay. All right, so we got this side step. Now we're right. going to do a skater. So we're tapping the foot backwards and reaching the arm forwards. Nice. Doesn't this feel good? And the thing is, you really don't need a lot of space. Exactly. Like, home. Yes, I used okay. to do this in my dorm room in college. And the last <laughs> move here is we're going to work the arms here, work the abs. Woo, like a dance hey, move. Al, Al this know, looks dancing. great. Way to go, Al. You should be dancing. Yeah. Woo. Should be, oh, and then we have to pay for that. Sorry. Uh, and then go ahead and just march in place. All right. All right. Yep. That is fun. That was good. All right. So, yeah. uh, okay. Daniel Kalaji, what's your what your question? Yeah. So I just joined the NBC family, and it's Welcome. been thank you, thank you, and it's been the best few months, but the busiest few months. Well, now as we get ready. <laughs> so, uh, Stephanie, what small aerobic routines can I implement into my daily schedule to feel mentally happy and healthy, especially in December, yes. the winter months? It's getting colder outside and darker earlier. I know motivation can be waning. So if you're at home right now, or if you're at the office, I want you to do some heel taps. So we just stand in place, tap one heel, and we're actually going at a very high beats per minute here, guys. We've got, yeah, we're going too yes, fast. we're going pretty fast. So <laughs> when you go to today.com slash start today, you're going to get the two workout videos. I've got a slower paced version and a higher paced version. Both are low impact. <laughs> we're going to add the arms. <laughs> we're going to add the arms here. We're going to get a little extra, yes. extra everything. <laughs> Get that heart rate elevated. And then our last move I want to show you guys is something really fun, okay. the pony. So oh, we're going to go pony. side to side, side to side. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Nice. One, two, three. Now we add the arms and up. Oh, it is. Nice. Yes. Get it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and then we keep going. And this is so much fun. Just play your favorite songs. We have a different idea of fun. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Thank and this will keep you moving all month long. Up next, Allie Love is back with some easy hacks to streamline and simplify our lives. Plus, she's going to share her favorite tips and products to help us prepare for that busy travel season. We'll be right back. We're back. These days, we all got busy schedules, and it can feel like there's an endless list of things to do. But today, contributor Allie Love has just what we need to simplify our daily routines. Allie, these are things that are doable little things, because sometimes little big things. steps aren't easy. Yes, I'm passionate about the economy of energy. Okay. Meaning, if we do some habits and put them into our everyday life, what ends up happening, we have time to do the things we love. Okay. First up, how many times have you carried loads of shoes? We have a comfortable shoe, and then we have a presentation shoe, a heel and a flat. Right, we have a well, flat to walk around the city Exactly, in and so what we want to do is we want to remove the fact of carrying multiple shoes and replace it with one. We have passion footwear. We have our model, Julie, here. It's going to show us how it goes. Julie? Julia. What, uh, wait, Julia. Julia. So yes. wait, what, what's happening so with this? you these? have a heel, and basically it turns into a flat. You click no, it, you and it comes not. off. Yes. Wait. So now she has a heel, and this is about to turn. She's taking it off, and it's going to go ahead, take it off, take it off. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it's going to turn into a flat. Look at that. So in, instead of carrying multiple shoes around, you're going to go ahead and have one shoe that does multiple things. That's what we want to do. We want to remove the carrying of multiple shoes and replace it 
Oh, got that. that with all just right, one that's shoe. good. Look at that. That's a great, I will say, passion footwear, that is a great design. Julia, great job. Yes, okay, you so it. ordering right. out is something that we do because we feel like it saves us time yes. and you're like, the food is fine, but yes. what do you say? Especially when it comes to lunch. Mm -hmm. Most of us spend a lot of time yeah. in the middle of the day figuring yeah. out what do I want to eat. Yeah. Sometimes we kind of like, choose the unhealthy mm -hmm. option. Mm -hmm. Here, what we want to do is a stitch in time saves nine. Okay. We want to go ahead and prep our meals. Okay. We want to prep our lunch. We have some fajitas here, protein and vegetables. Yummy. And we pre pre prep these because they're healthy. Mm -hmm. We know we love them. We know we love them. And guess what? You get more time back in lunch to actually just relax and take a beat for yourself. Okay, I like that. That's important, right? Yeah, so you got a healthy meal and you saves time. Yes. <clears throat> All right, Hoda, now this one, some of you folks don't turn off just yet, mm -hmm. okay? They, we're going to talk about stairs. We're going to remove the stairs. I know I might have lost some yeah. of you, but hear me out. Okay. We're, we're, remo uh, we're removing the elevators, actually. We're removing the elevators, and we are going to replace them with stairs. Now, the reason for that is you're getting an everyday yep. workout. Yep. And more importantly, you can have rules that work for you. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're going anywhere between the bottom and the fifth floor, maybe you use the stairs. Okay? Maybe it's the third floor. Maybe it's mm -hmm. the first floor. But you figure out what works for you. This is a healthy option. Remove the elevator. Replace with stairs. Once in a while. Gabby Giffords, who was the senator from Arizona, the congresswoman from Arizona who was shot, was here. And she has trouble with motor skills. Mm -hmm. And we asked, do you want the elevator? And you know what she said? Always the, the stairs. stairs. She yes. walked up and we thought, if she's doing it, we're doing it. We can do it. it. Exactly. All right. Let's get rid of self-talk and let's love ourselves. You, you love this. Yeah. I love this. We are removing negativity. Okay. We are replacing it with positivity. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. Well, we're making sure that our post-it notes, we talk about this all the mm -hmm. time, whether they're at our locker, on our desk, or in front on of us. On your Instagram. On your you Instagram. Have good ones. I have a ton yes. of them to remind you of who you are, how great you are, how well you're doing. Yes. You can put it as a screensaver on your phone so when you you use your phone as often as you do, you're seeing those positive words. And then, of course, our girlfriend group. We can make sure that we have a group just to send positive information. Love so it. remove the negativity, right. replace it with positivity. So our hair. We know that heat and hair go together, but you say yes. no. I say no. Remove the compound effect of heat on our hair. For many of us that use a flat iron or the curling iron, what we want to do is replace them with these heatless curling sets. So you can go to sleep in them. You can put Wait. them in your hair. Yeah, they're comfortable. You see this on TikTok, on Instagram. Okay. You put them so in your you hair. Put it in, in you wake up, and they're and soft. Look at you. you look great. And you're there. Imagine you are. going to bed and waking up with a new do, honey. <laughs> She's so, doing it. All right, it just takes the stress off your hair, which is exactly. one less thing that yeah. you have to worry about. Hair is a part of your body. You want it to be healthy. I've been waiting Lastly, for this. One. Give it to me. I what tell you are right we talking away, about? Okay? I am guilty of this one. We need to remove the fact that we don't eat breakfast anymore. We right. need to replace it with eating breakfast. And the way to do that is to adopt it to our busy schedule, okay. making sure that you cook in advance, similar to the fajitas. You cook it in advance, you pack it in the fridge, and then you go ahead and grab it out, cut it in squares. You feed your family, your friends. You can put it in your bag. You need a hot snack. bowl. This is an egg casserole, and we should dig in. So all of these simple habits, the economy of energy mm. and time, mm. they're healthy, and they make you a better mm. person. And with the holidays coming up, so many of us are gearing up for the busy travel season. That doesn't mean, though, your health has to take a back seat. Allie also stopped by Hoda and Jenna to share her favorite tips to make traveling a breeze. So okay. you're, like, you're a strategy person. I am a strategy she lays person. it out. I like to fit a lot of things in a very small area, okay. just like most people. Okay. So the first thing I recognize is that bag with zippers, like as my personal carry-on, is not my jam. Okay. The reason for that, I don't know if you have like a cup of tea or you have things in your hand, and all of a sudden you get to the gate and they're like, can I see your passport? Oh. And you're like, and you're like I need I to need get in it. So her. this bag stands up. You need a bag yep. that stands up. That's, by the way, so cute. Yes, cute. opens up and everything's inside. And what okay. I do, because this could be a jungle, right. in all honesty, mm -hmm. is I put things in pouches. I color code my pouches. Wait, color so, code? Yes. So I have Ollie. one pouch. I know. What's the I know. Yeah. Like, I have one pouch for, like, medicine. So I'm like, all my medicine's in here. It's in the bag. Right. Electronics. We're talking about, we were talking right. about headphones just yeah. now. Everything from phone chargers, headphones are in yeah. one bag. Yeah. Another Makeup. thing, my snacks, snacks and then all my skincare yeah. goes in there. So I just pull out a zip, Wait. open it up. She really needs to help us see, badly. It's, you should see Hoda's bag. Open it up a zip bag. And mine, for that matter. I'm yeah. not going to throw stones. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Now let's talk snacks. One thing you do 
do, which which sort of surprised me, is you do not eat a big meal before you fly. I do not. I don't know Why? how I'm going to feel. I don't yeah. know if you get a little bloated, a little gassy sometimes on flights yeah. or long trains. Or you don't feel well. You just, just don't yeah. feel well. So, so, and also, I like you're going to be sitting for a very long time. So if you're going to be sitting, you're not moving, you don't really need the nutrients, no. right? So what I do is one of those little pouches, like I'm a pouch queen, I have all my snacks. I love bone broth. You add hot water. You, hot are, water. you are having bone broth on the plane? I am, honey. It's fabulous. Girl, you're you one of those people. Animal. You're one of those people. I'm Let like, me can smell. I get a couple so of water, please? Smells like gravy. This is great to de-bloat. I will. It tastes really? good. Wait, I, I love, love it. Hold on. I'm going to be drinking Wait, this on the way. Yes, Look. they're little pouches that go in your snack pouch mixed. over there. Hot Can you water just put hot water everywhere? in? This yes, is how it tastes. It. You take it. a water bottle. You put your Wait, hot water. We should be having mug. bone broth. We're Lots way behind the time. It's little hacks that change your life. Okay, I love next. this. Okay. Oatmeal as well. I love pretzels. Oh, oatmeal. You just ask for water again. Yes, hot water. It's free if you're traveling on a train, on in a car. Okay. One of my favorite are. I'm going to pull these out. What are those? These are Smart Press little pack. This is just the Wait, perfect pack. Beetroot extra energy. You don't need a lot of caffeine. Wait, you, what do you do with it? You just add water. You just, no, beetroot juice. Oh, it's juice. It's just oh, a juice. Green, green juice. juice. All of your vitamins, vitamins, all the good things. A little pineapple chia Wait. cleanse. Helps with de-bloating. Oh, so you just you. put and this then, in your water bottle? Uh -huh. And then protein. Up. That's it. When you'll need to be satiated. Exactly. It's a perfect pack. It's How do they you also pack. like really these? Good. They taste this, good, Honestly, this is one of my favorite things on the planet. Okay, let's talk, let's talk hydration. Wait, what about this? These are actually like pretzels. Oh, I mean, and this are great for like if someone's on the plane. <laughs> yeah, like and they're hungry, you can share. You're like, hey, yeah, let's okay, share. okay. Hydration, okay. yeah. I um, I go to the bathroom a lot of times yeah. throughout the plane <laughs> hydration <laughs> station. That's what she always says on the health time. Right, we know. <gasps> I got it. Uh huh. Okay, you nailed it. Hydration uh -huh. station. I drink uh -huh. water all day, like yeah. on the plane, yeah. on but the car. But you get okay. dehydrated on plane, so you so need yes. more water than usual. And okay. not only dehydrated on the inside, but on the outside. Okay, so what? Do I was do? on TikTok and I saw this girl. She did like a 12-step program for your skin, and I was like, who has the time to do that? Nobody. Right. I will be honest. I am the person who will go to sleep with her makeup on. Don't judge me. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I will. I, I know. I knew you I were gonna say that. I no, I said, oh, I, I don't judge you because oh, look at your God. beautiful skin. Thank you. Okay, Thank so you. what do you take? So what I do this? is I have, these are face mm -hmm. wipes. Great to wipe mm -hmm. your face. Mm -hmm. I love this. I love an aquaphor right aquaphor. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lips, always. her nose chaps mm -hmm. up. Yeah. I always bring these things. A face spray. This is great. Hydration face spray, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Hydration mm -hmm. station. I love eye spray. mask. Mm -hmm. So instead of 12 steps on my own time, sometimes I'll do four steps. And then okay. the last thing are my essentials. Socks. I do not like putting my own socks on the floor of a plane or a train. So I cover them with travel socks. Headphones. I always carry carry hot sauce in my bag, swag you like Beyonce. So oh my God, you are hilarious. You are yes. hilarious. My husband loves strawberry jam. And then my favorite <laughs> thing is, if you've ever been on a traveling in public and you fall asleep sitting up and you go like this, yeah. and no one, I always travel with a little handkerchief and I go like this. So Just, I can, so so I can open can have my your mouth, mouth open if you want. But nobody cares. <laughs> I they know. Lot, they, yes, but you're, these are all brilliant. See, Allie, brilliant. Allie, I'm going to start having bone broth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I thank love that you, you always take you. my drinks. I, I, I love That's your so ideas. That's so good. It's good. so good. Just ahead, clear out some space in your living room because we're going to get moving with two Start Today workouts. But first, ever wonder how you can make your favorite foods healthy? Joy Bauer will reveal her best tips right after this.
Welcome back. Eating healthy isn't always easy, but here at Start Today, it's all about taking little baby steps. Here's today nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer with some simple ways to add a healthy spin to your favorite meals. So we're starting with the cozy, comforting yes. oh, yeah. stack oh, of pancakes. Oh. Mandatory in my house every Love weekend. Love it. But when you put a lot of butter and syrup on top, it's going to zap your energy and it's going to leave you feeling super lethargic. Really? The easiest way to upgrade your stack is by swapping your topping. And so mm. I am Voila. showing you ah. so the That's same fair. stack of pancakes with lots of colorful berries. So first the berries add Looks antioxidants and fiber. Right. Do you skip the syrup? It, it gives it yes, because what we put here is an aerated mm. squirt of whipped cream. So mm -hmm. the cool part about that is it ups the fun factor. Mm -hmm. It's like no calories. Right, because it infuses a lot of air within those canisters, and so you could have a generous squirt. And I'm telling you, every single bite is a delicious it really treat. Is. I'm okay. Okay. So there's not like a That's compromise a there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was breakfast. Is this lunch? This is lunch. So I'm showing the classic chicken wrap rolled in a tortilla. I do like a wrap. Instead, we have a chicken wrap rolled in lettuce Voila. leaves. Mm. And here's why this is a good one. So many people are looking to cut back on their <laughs> right, carbs. That's not the right way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the wrap to go to waste. <laughs> that's that's good. We don't like food waste here. <laughs> but a lot of people are looking to cut back wraps. on their carbs and lower their blood sugar. And this is one of the mm. most seamless and effective tri tricks you could do. And really, when you think about it, it's so the good. yummy filling that, that is, that is the star of the waste. show. Yeah, and if you yes. get a crisp, yummy piece of lettuce around it, yeah. Yeah. The right lettuce so I use either apart. romaine um, lettuce leaves, like when you buy the packages of the hearts, and also you can use butter lettuce, mm -hmm. or you can use iceberg. It's like almost Boston like bib lettuce. those. Yes, mm -hmm. those great big leaves are meant for wrapping sandwiches and burgers. Okay, so I can't wait for this one. Okay, so this is the beloved chocolate fudge cake, and I was kind of ballsy to take this one on. <laughs> But I tried my best to come up with a gooey, fudgy, mouth-watering counterpart. Okay. And I am I'm presenting to try this. my two ingredient two. chocolate fudge cakes. So there's two ingredients. There's no, no oil, there's no butter, and you don't need to use the oven. No okay. oil, no butter, no oven. No, what so, are the two ingredients? So it is Apple sauce and water. Oh, no, wow. no, no. Melted chocolate chips like and fudge. canned pumpkin puree. That's it. Joy, this actually is, this is, this is this pretty, this is like pretty good. It's good. Oh, I'm so happy. This, I was excited for you I was really this. skeptical, wow. too. Wow. And, and what I love about them, they're perfect portion control <laughs> treats that you can stash in your fridge. And when you're craving something super mm. rich and chocolatey and indulgent mm. without but going overboard. But even a third of this is rich enough. Is enough. That gives you that. Tastes like. It's this pumpkin puree and what else? Pumpkin puree and melted chocolate chips. That's so it. I used a dark chocolate chips, but you can use semi sweet. Oh my God. And of delicious. course, we're putting this on today.com. This is delicious. And everybody so can get the recipe. So, realistically, like calorie, what are we still so saving in all sorts of stuff, right? Fat, calories, all of it? Sh tons of sugar, tons of saturated fat, and tons of calories. Oh, that's um, super and it, rich. it really satisfies that craving. Yeah. I was and really it, skeptical about that. I thought you should have saved that. But you liked it. I do. I do. <laughs> all right, now a little snack. Okay. I feel like you should have saved that for your finale, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll go back and eat that <laughs> afterwards. So this is all about the chips and salsa. Yeah, and full okay. disclosure here, I love chips. And I joke around saying that one chip is a thousand chips because I yeah. can't stop. Yes. So I'm always looking for healthier counterparts. And we know that carrots and bell pepper sticks, mm. those are oh. obvious. What These are the underdogs. Mm. So it's jicama mm. and I'm it's sorry, also sugar snap peas. And this is why they're try so the great. I'm good. No, just he, try he it. likes the fun. Oh, the, the, the wrap of the fun. Oh, oh, seriously, I'm, I'm, this it's is really good. Super joy. snappy. It has a satisfying crunch, great flavor. They're in season right now. Mm -hmm. And it comes with tons of nutrition. I'm ashamed. I don't even know what it looks like from the outside to buy it. It's like a potato it, looking thing, right? It's sort of if a potato and an apple had a baby, yeah. you would get a jicama. But it's a very low calorie root yeah. veggies that's rich in that's potassium. Great. You don't have to cook it first. No, you don't cook it. You peel the outside skin Why are you and you <laughs> cut it into <laughs> sticks and then you dunk away really in whatever you want. Okay. Now that we're all fueled up, let's get moving. Coming up, we've got some easy exercises you can do right at home to stay in shape all winter long. And a dance workout you don't want to miss. We'll be right back.
We're back and leveling up our winter workout routines. Fitness trainer Isaac Boots recently shared some simple exercises we can all do at home during the colder months. All right, so uh, you say home workouts are, are effective, especially during winter. We don't want to get stagnant. Uh, so what, what's a move we can do to start strengthening? These are the simplest, most effective moves, okay. right? So ultimately, you want to reach your arms out okay. and just find your lower belly squeezing in really tight, just circling it back. You can get so much done with this okay. easy, simple move doing at home. Now, I'm adding weight to it, right? Yeah, a you weighted, have weights all over yeah, your body. So these are the Torched by Kilo Gear weights that adds a sensible amount of weight to the larger muscle group. Okay. So you actually end up burning 40% more calories. It's kind of like you're doing okay. a Which funky is amazing. Like exactly, it. it's a funky chicken moment. Wait, what, you're burning what, what, how many more calories? 40% more calories. Oh, wow. Wearing these weights that actually amplify the simplest move ever, okay? It's amazing. Aside from this, you can add a little squat. So you're gonna go down and just squeeze your booty tight, but Ooh. go as low as you, you can. Is that why your last your name's Boots? Tight. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now you can add a, a little variation. You can add a little balance moment, you know? Okay. Or if you're really feeling festive, really feeling festive, you can add a jump. Yes. I'm not that festive. Yes, exactly. So all of these, these things, really, you can do anywhere, so there's no excuse, okay. right? This next, I think, is the most important, the most comprehensive. We're gonna go down into a plank, no, okay? No. So, <laughs> we're gonna go into a plank here, right? Uh -huh. Oh boy. Al's gonna do a Liza Minnelli routine standing. on that chair, okay? Oh. So you're gonna hold right here. Now, you can either just hold here, squeezing your booty, you work every part of your entire body. You can add a shoulder tap, if you want to add a little more stability through your arms, always engaging your core, or you can add a right knee to your left elbow to really get your lower body activated, exactly, but focusing on your breath. And the thing is, there's no such thing as failure. You can simply hold your plank, mm -hmm. you can add a shoulder tap, all right. you can do all the variations and you get things done, I okay? I hope people are doing this at home with Let's us. Let's go, oh, baby. I hope they are too. It's a great little workout. Right? Yeah. Now, hands and knees. I know it's not often we find ourselves in this position. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> hands and knees. You're gonna lift your right leg bent, okay? You're gonna pulse back. And this is where you work dat booty, okay? Yeah, now, well. if you can't go on your knees, you can go on the chair. Yeah. <laughs> like so. Like this. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But look, you can actually add, you can hold the back of the chair or hold Al Roker. Oh. And you can touch your, your toe down, lift it. Oh, so up. I can do that from the back. Exactly. From the back of the chair. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so hold on to that. Okay. okay? You're going to go coupe, lift into attitude. Ooh. Coupe. 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 Exactly. Exactly. So you're still working your lower belly, uh -huh. right? You lift it up. Now I want you to hold it up bent. You're just going to pulse it back. Pulse hey. it back. Yes, that's how we get that booty pop. Oh. Okay? <laughs> Very good. Yes. I don't think anybody wants this booty to pop. Give me five. <laughs> I think there are a number of Americans who would love that. Oh, we're not done yet. Kristen Sudeikis is a choreographer and founder of Forward Space, and she's going to teach us a fun dance workout. But first, we're going to warm up with a moving meditation. Okay, we all ready? Everybody yeah. ready? <laughs> I've got two of the founding members from Ford Space all with right. me too, Rachel, hello, Keith. Hello. We've got some new teammates here. Our okay. colleagues. So Our this colleagues. is a moving yes. meditation? We're moving meditation. Okay. So there, this is a key element of Ford Space, the moving meditation. We're just going to... Okay. Warm our hands up. That like I this. can do. Right. This way. So, so far, far, so good. Like so that. Far, so good. Just to ground ourselves and connect to ourselves. Now release a little of the tension in the hands that you might receive from gripping the phone and all that good sure. stuff. Yeah, we know that feeling. And then just throw the arms out, out. So you're releasing the tension. Hello, ball. Hey oh, hey oh, hey oh, hey oh. This does feel nice. It does. Yeah. It does. And let the shoulders, you know, sort of shrug. Now take up lots of space. So. Feet way far apart, arms in the air, looking up, and just taking a second right there. Take a deep breath in from below the floor. Exhale down, let's go again here. Four, three, maybe walk the feet around two. One, you can join us at home if you want. Yes. Throw the hands out again. Release some of the tension in the hands again. Good, good, I good. I hope you guys are doing this at home with us because this feels amazing. It does yeah, feel good. Yes. We're good. starting there. So one arm up, one down, and then slowly coming in towards your center. Good, and then we're gonna go to the other side, slowly coming in towards your center and just aligning with yourself for a second. And then you're gonna go around your head like this 
Or if you can't go over your head, Stop if that's not available, you can just go towards your chest. And you think of pulling, pulling some water Good. onto you, a release, okay. a little okay. bit of relief. Okay. And then we're going to start dancing? We're going to start dancing. Okay. I mean, you know, here we go. Okay. So, here we go. we're on combo. Okay. It goes wave, wave, shoulder. Just oh. that. Five, six, seven, and wave, wave, shoulder. Yes? Again, five, six, seven, and wave, wave. shoulder. Again, shoulder. five, shoulder. Yeah, we're just touching that shoulder. How's it going? Wave, shoulder, we're going on. <laughs> Knee, take the coat off. Oh, take the coat take off. Take the coat Just off. Did. Is it so, off? Take the coat wave, off. shoulder, huh? knee, then which part? Take, take the, coat the coat off. off. That's right, and wave, shoulder, knee, knee then take, take the, the coat, coat off. off. Six, seven, and wave, wave. shoulder, knee. knee, take the coat off. Five, six, seven, and wave. Shoulder, yep, yep. A knee, take the coat off. Now hug, hug, open, up, down. Again, hug, open, <laughs> up, this is and cutie. down, and hug. And then you start to give it a, a little sum when you get, you know. A little sum, sum? A little sum, sum. Okay, yeah. Hug, open, shoo, up, down. Little faster. All right. Boom. And while you guys are doing that, hey, all right Kristen, now. thank you so much. You Thanks so to welcome. our backup group. We love it. We've never had backup dancers before. Hey. And that's all for this episode of Start Today. Don't forget, scan that QR code to sign up for our newsletter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Today All Day. Sponsored by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Now everybody loves a hearty meal. But when the cooking is done, nobody loves doing dishes. So today, we're making three delicious recipes that all come together in just one pot. I'm making a one pan chicken pot pie with some of my favorite spring veggies. I'm whipping up Tuscan style tortellini soup. And I'm making my flavor-packed Thai-inspired green curry noodles. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Growing up, it was always a treat for me and my siblings to make frozen chicken pot pies when my parents were out to dinner and we had to fend for ourselves. And today I will be making a more grown up version of this classic comfort food. This recipe has some of my favorite veggies and I know your whole family will absolutely love it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our onion going. Look at that stunning dice. Move those onions off to the side to prep the rest of our veg. This is fennel, gorgeous, gorgeous fennel. Bulb, fronds, and the stems, okay? So I really love using fennel in honestly any kind of cooking. I promise you all of that anise flavor is going to mellow out beautifully once it hits the pan. We have these fronds here. We're gonna just give them a nice rough chop. So we've taken the stem off and then I'm going to cut it in half like so. We'll go from the top to the back like so. And then rock it through from the back to the front. Let's quickly do our celery. And the theme here is green. I don't know if you can tell. All green veggies, that's what we're working with today. Okay, finally our garlic clove. And you also don't have to worry about chopping this too fine. So let's get to sauteing. We are going to add in a nice hunk of unsalted butter. We are also going to add in some olive oil. Once it is all melted and as it starts bubbling like so, that is when we know to add in our veggies. These will all go in at the same time. These veggies are really running away from me here. <laughs> okay, 
We want these veggies to break down, to caramelize a bit, to develop their flavor. And while that is going, we are going to get to work on the rest of our veggies because believe it or not, we are adding even more vegetables to this already full vegetation experience. All right, so next up we have our kale. This is lacinato kale, also known as dinosaur kale. It is flat, it's not as crazy and curly like curly kale. And my favorite way to prepare it is I will take the bottom right where the stem is, grab either side, and then take my finger and pull that stem right through. And there you go. Okay, so while this is going, we are actually going to add even more flavor with some fresh thyme. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to bunch it on up in pieces, slice it thin, just like so. How about that? Fabulous. We're gonna get to work on our chicken. A great shortcut that I love to do is I love to use a rotisserie chicken. I am pulling off this skin just because we don't necessarily need it and we can chop this up. My siblings prefer white meat and I prefer dark meat with chicken, so it's good. We'll have a little for me and then the rest for my sibbies. Okay, looking good. So now that our veggies are ready to rock, it is time to create what I like to call an almost roux. <laughs> So we are just going to add in this all-purpose flour, but it's really important when you add in flour to a pot pie, to anything as a thickening agent, that you take the time to cook the flour down. So we wanna just keep cooking this down for about two to three minutes. Okay, it's time to thicken this up. We're gonna start by doing one cup of the stock. We wanna make sure that all of this flour breaks down. And now what we wanna do is we wanna bring this to a simmer to continue thickening it a bit more. Next up, we are going to add in our kale to wilt it and to also thicken up our mixture a bit. And now that this looks nice and thick, we're going to add in our final ingredients, our peas, our fennel fronds, and our chopped up chicken. This is my favorite thing to do with a homemade pot pie. I love using puff pastry, store-bought. I'm taking a little bit of all-purpose flour and just giving it a nice light dusting. Open it on up. This is one sheet of puff pastry. We're gonna give this one more light dusting of flour. Take your rolling pin. The main thing here is to make sure that you roll it out so that it fits whatever pan you are working with. And we're just going to fold it bring our pan over, lift it up, and then open it up like a book, and dress it right over the top. You're cute, you're gorgeous, I love ya. We wanna make sure that we have about one inch around our cast iron. And you can just trim the corners off of that pastry. I have egg wash right here. And the reason why we're popping this onto the top and brushing it over the top of our pastry is because if we don't, what's gonna happen is our pastry is gonna end up looking a little sad. So we're just taking a pastry brush and really delicately brushing that egg wash over the top and the sides of the pastry. Okay, we wanna make sure it has some ventilation. You wanna make sure that you have 
at least three, maybe four, right in the center of that pie so that steam can escape. And then my favorite little extra layer of pizzazz is to take some flaky salt and sprinkle it over the top of this pot pie. So this is going to go into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes and just check about halfway through. Oh man, our pot pie has cooled. We want it to cool for about 10 minutes after it comes out of the oven. And now there's only one thing left to do, slice it up and give it a taste. And then we're gonna give this a nice big scoop. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mmm. It is unbelievable how food can instantly transport you back to a moment. It is just bursting with spring beauty and energy. I love it. One more bite, because we deserve it. I absolutely love Italian food, just like everybody else. It's so comforting and it always tends to hit the spot. Now with minimal prep, my tortellini soup is just a thing to make at the end of a long day because it's just in one pot. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the big pot that you have in your kitchen. I'm gonna set it onto a medium high heat. Next, we're gonna move on to the sausage. This is spicy Italian sausage. I think it adds a lot of flavor. Just remove the casing and the sausage. Well, sticky little thing, isn't it? <laughs> then we're just gonna put this right into the pan right now. Squeeze that sausage right on out, right into that pot. Right now, I'm breaking up the meat, so that way it'll be dispersed. It'll cook a little bit faster. Let's move on to chop up our veggies. So I've got some onion here. We're just gonna dice this up, slice it in half. And you can do generous chunks. Here we go. Moving on, we got some fresh tomatoes here. Gonna dice these up as well. And you know what? I'm thinking our sausage is about finished. Yeah, it's great. It's got a great color on there. We're gonna take a slotted spoon and we're gonna remove the sausage because we don't wanna take out the oil. We want the oil from that sausage to help out with the flavor. There we go. Now, since there's not a lot of oil left after the sausage, I am gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna add in my onions, I'm gonna saute those. You know I am a garlic lover, and if you love Italian food, you 
got to be a garlic lover too. Now, got some carrots here. Because they're so small, I'm not going to peel them. I'm just going to begin to dice them up as well. But just make sure you wash your carrots. Give that a nice stir. All right. In goes the garlic. Slide that on in. Give it another stir. And we're gonna cook this for about one minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna deglaze the bottom of this pot. We're gonna do that with some red wine because we're fancy here in the Today All Day Kitchen. So grab your favorite red wine. I'm gonna be using a blend and we're gonna add about a half a cup. There we go. And if you wanna toast yourself during this recipe, I won't judge you, that's your business. Mm -hmm. Let this simmer down. And in go the tomatoes. I'm gonna let the tomatoes rest in here with the onions and the red wine and garlic. Let that simmer for a minute. I'm gonna finish preparing the rest of our veggies. Basil, I'm gonna roll them up Snack the leaves. And I'm just going to it just like this. Beautiful. That should be enough. I'm going to reserve some too for garnish at the very end. Check back in on our tomatoes and onions and look at this. You can see how thick it is. It's kind of slushy. That's exactly the texture that we want. I think this looks good. What about y'all? Yeah, it can, it looks real good. Okay, let's start to bring everything else together. I'm gonna add in some oregano. Adding back in the sausage as well. Give this a good stir. And then our stock. Pour it in. This is some chicken stock. Another pinch of salt. Some black pepper. And lastly, I'm gonna sprinkle in some basil. Boom. Did we want some heat? Yeah, Kev, we want the heat. Bring the heat. All right. Some red pepper. Boom. I'm gonna crank up the heat so that it comes to a boil, and then as soon as it starts to boil, you're gonna wanna reduce the heat down to a simmer. take some kale. All I'm doing is folding the you know, kale over and I'm gonna take out the big stem. Take it at the very top and just drag the knife along the stem. Comes right on out. And then just do a chop. Just like this. This is great. 
still simmering. Ready, in, go. The kale, beautiful. And this is some cheese filled tortellini. I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes. You can cover and let this simmer. All right, I think this is done. I'm gonna turn off the heat of our pot and we're gonna plate this amazing one pot Tuscan tortellini soup. And this soup deserves the good bowls, okay? I'm just gonna say that, it deserves it. Get a big scoop. Oh yeah, we've got the color from the carrots, color from the kale, and color from the tomatoes. Mm, beautiful. Let's garnish. Pepper. A little bit of dried oregano. If you want some, beautiful. Basil, there we go. And look at this, holy smokes. Cannot wait to devour this soup. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my lord, that is a delicious soup. Now, I'm not team soup only in the wintertime. I'm team soup all year long. You wanna come home to a nice warm hug. This is it. from scratch might sound intimidating, but I promise it's actually pretty easy. After trying this recipe, you may never go back to that jarred stuff. I'm gonna kick things off with my curry paste. Traditionally, this is made in a mortar and pestle, but this girl is busy, so we're gonna put everything in a food processor and it comes out just great. So we're gonna first start with some coriander stems. So get those right into the food processor. Then we're gonna use one small shallot or half of this large one here. And I like to quarter it so it's easier to blend up in the food processor. So get that right in. And then we're gonna use four cloves of garlic. One Thai green chili. You could just take the stem right off like this. And you could cut this in half if you'd like so it's easier to blend. And then we're gonna use one inch piece of fresh ginger. Fresh is key. The traditional ingredient in this is usually galango, but it's not readily available, so ginger is the next best substitute. And the best way to peel ginger is using a spoon, because if you run your spoon right against the meat of the ginger, the peel comes right off. How cool is that? So pop that right in. Next, we want half a stalk of fresh lemongrass. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. And we're gonna get that beautiful lemongrass right in. I'm using one fresh lime. Let's get that all in. So then we wanna just cut this in half. You can use your hand or a little citrus squeezer and give it a good squeeze. 
and we have a few more remaining ingredients. We want some toasted cumin seeds and some toasted coriander seeds. Then we wanna add a pinch of white pepper. This is deceiving, white pepper is quite spicy, so a pinch is more than enough. And then a pinch of kosher salt. And we're gonna whiz this up. And just keep pulsing. Okay, so I think we're good. So I'm gonna get it out into a bowl and then I'm gonna grab my veggies, tofu, and noodles for the rest of my recipe. So we've had our tofu here sitting in some paper towel. We've pressed it so you'll notice that it's a little bit drier from when you open the package. So I like small cubes because I want them to be bite-sized and able to fit on my spoon or fork. Plus, if you make them smaller, then they'll cook better and crisp up. Okay, the next step is tossing them in some cornstarch. So you just wanna lightly coat them. Great, so let's turn our skillet on. And we're gonna wanna get this to about a medium high heat. Coat the bottom with some neutral cooking oil. I'm gonna start giving them a flip. This is what you want. This is gonna be flavor packed. These are looking great. You could see the color, the crisp. So I'm gonna get them removed and then start prepping my veg. First, I'm gonna slice my onion. We're just using a medium to large yellow onion. So I'm gonna do a quick slice on each half. So our onion is done. And next we wanna do one long red chili. These actually aren't that spicy, but they're gonna add a lot of flavor and they're gonna look beautiful against the green curry. So we're just gonna give a quick slice on this, just basically thin circles. Great. And next we wanna slice a green bell pepper. This one's a big one. So cut this in half. And I just like to scoop out the center to clean it up. And then similarly, we're just going to run our knife through it like the way we did for the onion. Great. And lastly, we have some carrot. We're gonna try doing this julienne because I like it to match the onions and the peppers. Okay, and now the one pan or pot magic begins. So we're gonna take the same pan that we used to crisp up our tofu in. While that's heating up, we're gonna coat it with a little bit more of that neutral oil. And now I'm gonna add in all of my veggies. Ooh, I always love that sizzle. Mm -hmm. So we wanna saute it for about five minutes or so. And to help with the process, we're gonna add in a bit of salt. The salt is gonna help release all of the moisture in the vegetables. Now that our onions are looking a little bit translucent, it's time for our curry paste. It smells so good. We're gonna let this cook down for about three to four minutes. Once you notice that the vegetables have softened and it's browning on the bottom, it's time for our liquids. So we're gonna add in about two cups of water. And some full fat coconut milk. And now is when we add our green peas. Stir this all together. And then we wanna bring this to a slow simmer. So while we wait for our curry to come to a slow simmer, I wanna talk about the noodles. So I'm actually using edamame noodles, which are noodles made out of edamame beans. They're super delicious and they're a beautiful green color. 
Okay, so our curry is simmering. So now it's time to add our noodles. You just wanna make sure all the noodles have some moisture on them. They're all covered with the liquid. Great. Then we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about five minutes. I'm gonna clean up some of these bowls and get ready to taste. Okay, so our noodles have been simmering for about five minutes, so let's give it a check. These will look so good. Notice that all the liquid has reduced, but it's still nice and saucy, and the veggies are still vibrant in color. All right, let's get it plated. So beautiful. I love the way the carrots look in this because they really add that pop of color. Okay, now for our tofu. We haven't forgotten about that. So they've actually cooled off here, which is great because now they're nice and crispy. And then we're gonna add some of our garnishes. So we have some fresh lime, some fresh coriander, and we reserved some of our fresh red chili. Look at this, can you believe this was made in only one pan? I just have to give this a taste. Are you kidding me? It's like I'm walking the streets of Bangkok. It's so vibrant, it's so fragrant. You should always eat with your eyes first. And this is certainly a dish that I'm eating with my eyes first. Good Monday morning, a massive storm making a mess of the morning up and down the East Coast. Yeah, and it's far from over. Good morning.